Milestones are often achieved with a mix of luck and skill. And while some marbles dream only of watching the Marble League, those who strive to compete in it find a daunting mountain of dedication and difficulty in front of them. Few make it to the Marble League and even fewer have ever won it. Who will etch their name amongst the greatest marble teams of all time? We're about to find out. Hello and welcome to the 2020 Marble League, brought to you by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. I'm Greg Woods. Much on the line today to start the competition off right and staying in line is absolutely paramount to try to conquer balancing. Just stay on as long as you can, make it down into that green catch basket and you will get 130 points. Otherwise, wherever you drop off to the side is how many points you will get and it will all be added up. Team Galactic, our hosts, get us started in the Marble League and off they go. They've lost two to the near side, three and none make it past 90. Not quite what they hoped right off the bat, especially when you think back to past competitions. Finishing means you score well. And as he sits in the Andromeda Dome now, King Stardust looks a little worried. Raspberry Racers, they know that. They've got two on, and they get one finisher. One very nearly dropped in the basket as well. We marked it a 120 for a 355 total. That's pretty good. Also, speaking of King Stardust, you saw a shot of him earlier sitting next to John Oliver. I want to give a shout out to him. In the meantime, the racers lost too early and crowded each other out at the end, still able to get one in. The Green Ducks start off all bunched together. They've got one that's getting straight down the middle, and that will keep that 130 nice and safe if you can keep it on that center line. Just a 268, though, not what the Green Ducks had hoped for. Our runners up in the 2019 Marble League. The Hazers, third place in last year's Marble League. Down they come and immediately that veered to the right. They're gonna recover well and they're gonna have two finishers. We're losing one at seven though. Look at how much that stunts it. Even with two finishers, just a 320 for the Hazers, that's it. So Raspberry Racers hold the top spot. 355, well clear of the rest. The Savage Speeders, our 2016 Marble League champions. They lose everybody to the side and they're gonna have nobody make it all the way to the end. Look at how they fanned out, almost crowding each other. There's so much about this event where you have to work together as a team. And I know it's the first event, I know there are nerves, but they had a chance. A lot of these teams in the qualifiers, in the Savage Speeders case, and some of the other ones had a chance in the friendly. Crazy Cat's Eyes, how did they handle it? Two on and they bumped each other. Yellow Eye will make it to the end, but were it not for that impact past 80 or 90, somewhere in there, they may have had two. Still, 331, 
not too bad. There's that little bump between them. The margins are fine. The Oceanics in run 7 of 16, chasing a 355. They come off bunched together. They need one finisher because I don't think the three that fell off early is going to be enough. Working in the draft can also help you quite a bit, but you don't want your speed to be so much that you're either bumping into your teammate in front of you or you're losing that pull and then you end up falling to the wayside. The Thunderbolts, halfway through. Down they come, an immediate separation between them. That first marble got well out in front of everybody else, even with one finisher, just a 261. A little bit eager, perhaps, coming out of the gate, leaving everybody else to play catch up. So we take a look where we are so far, and it's 355 to 331. Team Galactic down there at the bottom. Not the kind of showing that they want as hosts. How about Mellow Yellow here? Oh my. Oh, that was way too mellow. 156. What happened there? None of that looked composed. The Minty Maniacs, a great story to get back in the Marble League after missing out in 2019. What do they have for us? They've got three on, and they're all oh, nearly going to have two finishers. This is still going to be a great points total, though. They lost one early. But look at that. 109, 120, and 130 for a 380. Great teamwork there. Staying wide of each other, not crowding anybody out, and the angles at the end just barely off. And after that much travel, even a couple of degrees, make all the difference between actually making it to the end and not. Balls of Chaos, they know that. They bump into each other. And they do keep one. They will have a good total at the end there with a 118. But a 337 finds them toward the top part of the standings. Just getting in each other's way ever so slightly. It also means the later you get in the competition, the more the pressure ramps up. You see the numbers to beat. And right now, Minty Maniacs 380. What do the Wisps have? They're going to have two finishers. Our 2018 champions notch in at a 353. Two finishers in a palindrome. Can't argue with that. Look at how straight and true they were. Just four yet to run. And it may take two finishers and good teamwork to topple the Minty Maniacs. What do the Orangers have? They lose one, two, three already. One will make it to the end. But a rather disappointing start for our 2017 champions. Three to go. As we take a look at a replay here, a lot of contact. A little bit of a diamond formation, which you see sometimes more in collision than you do in the balance beam. The Hornets. 14 of 16. They veer to the left. One manages to stay true. Watch them as they come off the ramp here, already angled to the left. I don't know if that's because psychologically they'd seen so many teams that drifted over to the near side. They decided, let's start to the left and hope that we curl on back. I'm getting some of their events mixed up, perhaps. It didn't happen. Momo, a great showing in the funnels of the qualifiers, and a great showing in balancing here. Two to the end, 260 from them. But look at the rest, 29 and 33 means it's not enough. Great job working together to make it to the end. You've got to keep your sights ahead. You cannot look back. The Bumblebees. They lose two, three, four off before 90. And they will not factor in to the final results. However, it will mean that Minty Maniacs with a 380 have won the first gold of the 2020 Marble League. Raspberry Racers pick up the silver and Midnight Wisps by just two centimeters, the bronze. Congratulations to the most balanced teams of today. The Midnight Wisps, the Raspberry 25 Racers, points. That gets the Minty Maniacs off to a great start.
And to make things even better, a $5,000 donation will be made in the Minty Maniac's name to the Atlanta Community Food Bank. Galactic scores one point, but here are your standings after one event. With 15 more to go, it's still anybody's competition in the 2020 Marble League. Welcome back inside the Andromeda Dome for the second event in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Ladies hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. On the docket Welcome today, to the Half Pipe. Half -pipe. So you see a brief example of what this will look like. Drop on in, stay tubular, and see if you can hold on as long as possible by slaloming back and forth. The goal is not to get to the bottom quickly, but rather to stay in the half pipe as long as you possibly can. Two rounds today added together to get our winner. As the wave moves through the stadium, what will the wave look like when they drop on in? Minty Maniacs won the first event, and we're ready for the second a week later. There's been a lot of preparation and strategy for this event. Oh, and a hard hit there. Completely throws the field wide in both directions. Two finishers apiece so far. Three were tied. It'll come down to the fourth ones. And I believe that Mellow Yellow will get the higher total, even though one of those marbles went all the way to the top. And yes, they will. 27.98 get the win. So you can see that initial drop in point has so much emphasis. Raspberry Racers and the Minty Maniacs, are they going to prove that as well? Yes, they will. Maybe not to the same degree, but Minty Maniacs have two clear up at the top there. Look at that, almost completely stopped. They can take their time. They don't really have a slalom going back and forth, but look at the clock continuing to run. This should be an easy victory for the Minty Maniacs. In fact, it's a new Marble League record. 33-7-5. That is a huge gap to the Raspberry Racers. Minty Maniacs on form to start the Marble League. Will we see that record fall? Is anybody going to come close? Balls of Chaos and Green Ducks will be the next ones to try. They come down and a heart smack into the wall and each other. Sends two of the Green Ducks higher up, but look at that little impact there. That keeps one of the Balls of Chaos just meandering down the course with the clock running. And it's all going to come down to the math here. It looked like this Green Ducks have three up top compared to just one for the Balls of Chaos. Oh, but it wasn't enough. The Green Ducks get the win, even with that trailing marble. Midnight Wisps and the Hazers, quarter of the way through these runs. Down they come, and pretty back and forth. It seems to alternate as they come down the course. These higher up ones could make all the difference. Three for the Wisps have already finished. And that's a really tough one to tell. The Wisps battling all the way off to the left there, but the Hazers were able to get it done. 31-35. So they've broken that 30 mark, only the second team to do so behind the Marble League record from the Minty Maniacs. Oh, Rangers and the Savage Speeders bunched up together. You wonder what it's like in that starting gate. Down they come. Immediately, the speeders shoot two off to the bottom. That is not going to work out very well for them. Look at the O-Rangers, three up top, slaloming in tandem. Back and forth they come. And I would have to think that should be an easy victory for the O-Rangers. Oh my gosh, so good that it's actually another new Marble League record. Look at that, almost all of the Savage Speeders already vacated off to the right. First marble finishing in under four seconds for the O'Rangers. That was seven. That made a huge difference, and the O'Rangers vault over the Minty Maniacs to take the lead. Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Hornets chasing what is now a 34 4 9 record. They drop on through. Three of the Crazy Cat's Eyes well up to the top of the half pipe. As they come down here, this is going to be fairly close. Really tough to tell what the numbers might be. There you see, already dropping two off to the bottom off screen. How close was it? Well, not that close. A little over three, almost three and a half second victory there. Momo and the Oceanics next. 
Down they come, and Momo, they've got two headed off to the bottom of the half pipe already. Two finishers, but they've got two all the way up to the top. They bump into each other. One of them's going to take their time getting down there. But what's it going to work out to time-wise? Kind of interesting. They've sandwiched them. Two to the top, two to the bottom. And consistency was key. The Oceanics just barely by half a second get the win. Bumblebees and the Thunderbolts up next. They collide into each other pretty strongly. Bumblebees already have one finisher. Thunderbolts have two. Two for the Bumblebees still up top behind everybody else. Keep that slalom wide and you're going to gain more time. That's one way to say it, I guess. You want to keep your slaloming back and forth as wide as possible because that lateral movement means it's not turning into progress down the course. And it worked for the Bumblebees, 30.82 results thus far. Get past 30 and you are going to be in the top 10 pretty solidly by the end of this, I would have to think. But remember, this is two rounds added together, so we're not done yet. Mellow Yellow and Team Galactic. Ooh, three for Mellow Yellow, already working their way off screen and down toward the finish line. Oh, but one of them has managed to lag behind. That'll make up a little bit of time between the two teams. But those three early finishers will not be good for Mellow Yellow. It was not. Team Galactic gets the win, 31-7-4. It's a big difference from their first round, 25-80. Raspberry Racers and the Minty Maniacs. Hard impact there once again. Already one finisher for the Maniacs. Four still on the board, 3-2 now for each team. And one latecomer for the Raspberry Racers. Had to be of some benefit, but how did they work out? All in the middle, and they used the ricochet to send them up the course. And it's a 30.8. And the win for the Raspberry Racers. Four second improvement. Green Ducks and Balls of Chaos. Down they come. Balls of Chaos has one bump all the way against the back wall. But look at there. Green Ducks still have one that's just getting off of that wall. Unfortunately, the finishers down below may nullify some of that progress. How good was that last stand for the Green Ducks? Not good enough. 12-4-8 to an 11-3-1, but everybody else made up for it. Green Ducks, in fact, got worse. The Wisps and the Hazers. Hazers sitting in fourth after round one. Midnight Wisps keep three up top compared to just one for the Hazers. Hazers trying to keep it wide, but that does not let the Wisps get by. So two of the last three will go to the Midnight Wisps, as will the overall win of this run. It results with Galactic up top, which combined total puts them at about a 57 to the Wisps 59-ish. Savage Speeders and the Arrangers. That was a very hard impact that stalled a couple of the marbles out. We've already got one finisher, barely near five seconds in. The Rangers still have two. There will be the last one to finish. So the interesting speeders appropriately had the quickest time in round one. How close was it? Uh, about two seconds difference, and the O-Rangers get the win between them. If my math is correct, they should be sitting on about a 66 as the number to beat. 14 of 16. Hornets and Crazy Cat's Eye. They all drop in, and Crazy Cat's Eye send one down the course very quickly, but then it's going to be two... Coming in next for the Hornets. Who will be last? A big gap back for the last crazy cat's eye to cross. Did that help? They're only 16 hundredths down from the Rangers after round one. They're going to need probably 31-7 to beat them here. And they're not going to get it. 30.16. They get the win. But it puts them probably in second place. They could not get over the Rangers. We get down toward the end of this event. Just a few more runs to go. Who will improve and make a difference? Oh, that was a very sharp impact with three headed off to the right already for the Oceanics. That will not bode well as they have a lot of making up to do. Momo, on the other hand, look, two up top. Do they both bump off that wall? Yes, they do. And Team Momo gets the win easily. 30.66, nearly an eight second differential. I think also a four-second improvement from round one. Thunderbolts and the Bumblebees. 
Thunderbolts have three down to the bottom, but collisions up top could make a big difference. As a result, nearly come to a stop up there of one of the Thunderbolts. Look at this gap. Time is ticking. What does it work out to? 27-9-0 to a 25-2-8. That did make a difference. So you can see Team Galactic does get the win in this round. But remember, it was a two-round event. And as we combine the two runs, it's the O-Rangers that get the win. Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Minty Maniacs will round out the podium. And a $5,000 donation will be made in the O-Rangers' name to Banco de Alimentos de Puerto Rico, courtesy of last week tonight. Minty Maniacs staying on fine form. Well done to the Crazy Cat's Eyes to sneak in there and paw at the silver. Hat tip also to our hosts finishing in fifth, but let the O's reign. Minty Maniacs still hold the overall top spot though, but the O-Rangers jumping up eight for a tie for second place with Crazy Cat's Eyes after two events in the 2020 Marble League sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. If by the end of event three in the 2020 Marble League, your head is not spinning, or all of you for that matter, I commend you because this will make you dizzy. Hello everybody and welcome to the 2020 Marble League, proudly sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. I'm Greg Woods. The Funnel Endurance Event. The marble that stays in the funnels the longest will win. And uh, Stardust is bravely trying all of these events. By the way, if you haven't noticed, that is King Stardust running through all of these. He finished in a 50-29. The main competitor should hopefully get much better results than that. No slight to King Stardust. Uh, he's had a lot of other important things to do rather than practicing the funnel endurance. And so you see the first flight of orange funnels first, standard size before you drop into those larger green ones that require a totally different strategy to keep your pathway wide and progress on through. And down they go. Jostling for position early on makes a big difference in this. As you see, two, now three have already dropped through into the bottom funnel. Appropriately, the Savage Speeders are one of them, but remember, you're trying to stay in the longest. That battle up top is the one you really want to watch. The Green Ducks hold the lead right now as they fall on through. Meanwhile, down below, we're just about to get our first dropping into the Green Funnels, and it will be the Oceanics trailed closely by the Bumblebees. Also, Savage Speeders are down there. Looks like Mellow Yellow doing a good job up top. Even that angle's wide, but it's just as quickly in this event that you can drop on through two funnels at a time. You have to stay focused all the way throughout. This really becomes a chess match, the green funnels. If you saw this in the last marble standing games, this is one where you have to change your angle and your strategy completely from the orange funnels. Up top, great job. Green ducks holding strong up there. Look at the speed that builds up when you finally do get down, ready to drop in through the opening. Down below, a team of marbles, all taking oval-esque pathways around the precipice of falling down into the second-to-last funnel before our finishing. Finally, the Green Ducks join them, keeping as wide as they possibly can. Look at the time, by the way. You mentioned the differences in competitors already. 1.20 as the Savage Speeders enter the final funnel first. Just because you enter it doesn't mean... But that's where you will finish, because look at all the shouldering going on, the nudging back and forth. Sometimes even just catching the edge of the opening may actually help you as we get our first finisher, and it is Team Momo at 98 seconds and change. Mellow Yellow is going to come next. It is still a big lead up top. Look at the angle difference here. As the Oceanics, Bumblebees, Minty Maniacs, Savage Speeders manage to hold on. Wizzy finishing in second, and now it's just a matter of where will the finishing time be for the Green Ducks. Ducky got out in front early. And taking their time. Hey, why not? This is the Marble League. 206.99 for Ducky. Look at that, a full funnel lead. More than that, while everybody else is down there worried about who's going to finish last. Green Ducks. Just trying to keep within their own minds and not mess up too much. 206.99 in Group A. Almost a 30-second difference between our first and last finisher. Now ready for Group B. 
As they enter, we already see two drop into the second and three now into the third funnel. And that is Shock from the Thunderbolts. Trying to regain composure. Smoggy from the Hazers held the lead briefly there. Up top, Crazy Cat's Eye with Cyan Eye taking a turn in P1. Remember, it's the last marble to finish is the winner. Into the green funnels it begins. A trio dancing back and forth. Add more marbles to the mix, you're going to get more collisions. You can hear several. As up top, it is now Balls of Chaos, as now they drop on in with a three-way battle. I was going to say the Arrangers were a part of that, but now they fall on through, and Crazy Cat's Eyes have lost the lead. It's Clutter from Balls of Chaos that takes it, ooh, and quickly down they come into the second green funnel. Arrangers, Crazy Cat's Eyes, Balls of Chaos still fighting that three-way battle for the lead. Lipping out just briefly there, Crazy Cat's Eyes drop on through. Arrangers inherit the lead, the winners of the last event. Here in Group B. No real draft to speak of when you're in these circular motions. At least at this slow a speed, you're more focused on your own pathway and trying to keep it from becoming bumper cars. Everybody in one funnel all together. And just like that, you can see how much the field can sometimes get leveled. The Rangers, oh, very nearly lost the lead, but somehow they managed to hold on. Great strategy work in traffic. The Rangers look like they are holding the lead and will enter the final funnel last. The question is, who will be our first finisher? Nobody daring to get that close quite yet. They're trying desperately to keep their momentum up as best they can, and we do have a finisher. That's Vespa from the Hornets. Smoggy from the Hazers comes on through. Raspberry Racers, Thunderbolts, Balls of Chaos. Quicker than I can say it, we have determined the winner of this heat. And Group B goes to the O-Rangers. 2.15.12 is a longer time than what Ducky from the Green Ducks had. 2.06.99 back there. Kinoan takes the lead. So 9th to 16th is set. And the eight marbles that took the longest between the two groups will move on to the final. Who will it be? For gold in the funnel endurance in event number three of the Marble League. Let the clock start ticking. It doesn't matter what your time is, just so long as you stay in longer than everybody else. And so far, it's the Thunderbolts that get off to a good lead. Like the opposite is true as you look farther down the course. Savage Speeders take the lead as I say that. They're going to enter the next funnel along with Minty Maniacs who vacate that one very quickly. It's Thunderbolts and Savage Speeders holding on to the lead. Minty Drizzle was fighting in there as well, and now, as I say, that falls on through along with Cyanai, who had been in the green funnels for a little while. Also, Balls of Chaos down there with Clutter. Ducky will join them. Three-way battle up top becomes a two-marble back and forth with the O-Rangers and the Bumblebees. Bumblebees sitting in ninth in the standings. O-Rangers up in second. Already dangerously close to the Thunderbolts, going from the lead, nearly to dropping on through, but that dubious distinction will go to the Green Ducks. Ducky could not hold on and keep that momentum wide. It will be the Thunderbolts next as the Savage Speeders retook the lead. They try to keep a wide angle, but bumping into some marbles already has them in the bottom part of that funnel, ready to drop on through. And could we have the entire field once again in a single funnel? And we will. This is where you can really make up a lot of time and totally change the trajectory of your race. Who will fall on through? First, it will be the O-Rangers. Kinoan could not keep it up. Oh, look at Minty Maniacs. They're dangerously close to moving through into the last funnel, and they do. Bumblebees hold the lead. They need to stay as wide as they can and get away from that melee in the middle, but they're getting caught up in it a little bit. I think they may have held on to the lead. No, they didn't. They were usurped from the lead. Who is that shaking on through? It's Cyanai. Crazy Cat's Eyes took the lead. Who will finish last? It will be the Thunderbolts. Then the Bumblebees. They could not hold on to it. Crazy Cat's Eyes next. Balls of Chaos in there along with three ducks. Oh, Rangers fall on through to take the silver. And it will be Minty Maniacs. Another gold medal. Minty Drizzle, 208.71. The Minty Maniacs 
absolutely beside themselves, living up to the second part of their name at least, because they have just won their second gold medal in three events. Unreal. Oh, Rangers get the silver. Savage Speeders sitting in last place in the overall standings coming into this event. Pick up their first medal of these games, a bronze. Congratulations to Minty Maniacs. A $5,000 donation will be made in their name to the East Texas Food Bank for winning the gold. Donation courtesy of last week tonight with John Oliver. So what does this do to the overall standings? Look at the lead now. 14 points clear of the O'Rangers. Crazy Cat's Eyes hanging on in third. Balls of Chaos up two. Green Ducks up five. And the Savage Speeders got off of the bottom spot as we head to the Newton's Cradle. What could possibly make the Marble League a little bit better than normal? Add in some science. Anybody? All right, maybe that's just me. Either way, we reach event number four of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, the Newton's Cradle. 100 centimeter tall tower, the striker will descend and launch the skipper on the other side of the Newton's Cradle. As we see King Stardust get as far as he can up that inclined ramp. That is how we will get the measurement. All about conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. 73, the result that King Stardust gets. A little bit difficult to tell sometimes, but it's going to be the bottom center of the marble where the results are determined. We'll see how that 73 stacks up to be professional competitors. Always interesting to see somebody give it a try first, though. The marbles will be working in pairs as they come down. You see yellow, and the captain, Yella, will be the skipper who will launch after the cradle. A good impact there and stretching out past 85 goes the captain. It's a very different event than block pushing. You can see all of the different angles and the different tolerances that are involved, even a flex on the track. Mellow Yellow comes through with an 89-10. We'll see how that stacks up and the mark to beat. We move on to the Oceanics. See, and Shore, and Shore is going to get out toward 95. Not just 85 there, as the Newton's Cradle flaps away. Oceanics need a good result sitting in second to last. Very hard impact. There's so much that goes into that initial striking of the cradle. And a 95-4-0. Where the Oceanics currently sit in first place. Granted, only out of two, but take what you can get. Thunder. The captain descends and sends lightning on its way. Past 90. Should be good enough for provisional second place thus far. In the block pushing event, you have, oh, look at the air. After the strike there, that's why they built up those walls over on the left side for the striker. My goodness. Some danger involved in this when you don't have your team pushing with you as a 91.65 is the total. It's all on one marble. In this case, it's going to be Starry as the striker sending Pulsar past 100, nearly to 105. That was a great push. Also a strong ricochet there. It's, as, I, as I mentioned, all about conservation of energy. It gets sent through the 10655. Wow. Gets sent through the uh, balls that are on the Newton's Cradle into the marble that is the skipper. So you have to hit the rounded surface perfectly. You have to keep that push going as hard as you can. You have to hope it gets transferred into your teammate who can then carry it uphill. Ooh, and not going to be an ideal effort here for the Hornets on that run. Another flex out of the track on impact. And you have to wonder if that dissipates some of the energy as the skipper streaks up course to a 90.75. Savage Speeders now with the captain pushing rapidly. And rapidly nearly pips 100. To see in the official timing and scoring where that comes in. Speeders have definitely and appropriately had speed in the events, but maybe not always what you want in certain events, like the funnel endurance, for instance. But uh, maybe they can make use of that here. The speed of the Savage Speeders slowing to a crawl and a 99.80, just shy of the 100 mark. Team Momo. 
in the gates with Momo pushing Momo Mo. Maybe they could have used Samo on that one. Good impact there. Fairly clean on the skipper's side. How far up? 96.50. But in the Oceanics and Mellow Yellow, and the Thunderbolts and Hornets. Now the Bumblebees. Swax gets up toward 100 and then heads back toward the cradle. This is as much of a precision event as it is a strength event. A very different look than what we usually see in the Marble League. You really have to work together, but you also need physics working on your side. And a 100.20. Thus far, Team Galactic hold the lead by 6.35 centimeters. They're sitting toward the bottom of the overall standings in the Marble League, and the hosts could use a great finish. The Hazers in the gate, ready to drop that 100 centimeters down. What does it get transferred to? Nearly 100 centimeters going the other way. Nice strong impact there. You can tell a little bit by where the striker goes after the hit. Ooh, narrow, 100.50. Just three millimeters more than the Bumblebees. Mallard, the captain. The striker for the Green Ducks. Was the job done well enough? Also near that 100 mark. I think if anybody's gonna get above it, especially by a sizable amount like we saw with Team Galactic, and that could set you up for a medal. 99.60. Two millimeters behind the Savage Speeders. It's all being bunched up in that 99 range. Balls of Chaos. Ooh, something went a little bit wrong there. They just barely got past 90. Maybe a little bit too chaotic on the descent. What does the impact yield? Well, fairly straight back. But look at the spin that you see from the striker heading out of the picture. That is extra energy that did not go toward moving up the ramp. And a 92.50 shows that well. Also, that uh, skipper bouncing back and forth side to side. The Midnight Wisps are going to make a lunge out toward 105. That's the best run we've seen in a while from anybody. What kind of an impact was that? Decently square. Look at the trek down the course. The skipper staying off the walls and getting to 104.50. In run 12 of 16, just a few left to go. If Team Galactic can survive another couple of runs, they will at least be guaranteed a medal. Raspberry Racers now. Rizzy striking Rozzy. Also getting near that 105 range. We're not done yet. Ooh, even getting a launch off of the Newton's Cradle. Usually we see that from the striker and not the skipper. But in this case, where does it go? Oh, very close. 105-10. Three runners left. Crazy Cat's Eyes. They'll send Yellow Eye also out toward 105. Everybody at the end here has been saving it up. They know what they have to beat, and they're really putting everything into it. Barely any movement at all from those first four balls of the Newton's Cradle. Crazy Cat's Eyes, they don't beat it, but a 104.85 gets past the Midnight Wisps. Just short of the Raspberry Racers. Now the O-Rangers. This does guarantee, by the way, oh, that Galactic will have a medal, but I don't think it's going to be gold. Look how straight back the striker went. All of the energy was pushed forward, and I think that has resulted in getting past, yes, indeed. It's a 107.55 and provisional P1. And the O-Rangers can get no lower than silver. The Minty Maniacs have been on a tear lately. What can they do here? It's not going to be enough. It is not going to be enough. The O-Rangers will capture gold. Team Galactic is going to be happy to medal. Let's see what the final result was. For the last run in our leaders of the Marble League. A great effort at a 102-4-0 for the Minty Maniacs. And so the Raspberry Racers capture the bronze, Team Galactic the silver, and the O-Rangers secure gold. And with that gold medal, a $5,000 donation will be made in the O-Rangers name to Feeding South Florida. Congratulations to them. The O-Rangers.
Columbia Rangers may be finding some footing beneath them now. Same thing with Team Galactic. Hey, O Rangers pretty overwhelmed about their second goal in the Marble League. It's also the first time that the O Rangers have acquired two golds in one Marble League. The Newton's Cradle, a unique event that we've seen. And as a result, look at how close it is up top. The O-Rangers have jumped into the first spot after event four of 16. The Minty Maniacs are one point behind. Gather your courage and prepare to fly. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth event of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Long Jump. A classic, classic athletic event where these marbles have to pick their angle of attack perfectly, get a good launch off of the jump, and see where you end up in the soft sand. King Stardust, ever the good sport, will take a turn at this. And you see the red line, which will mark where he came down at a 58 even. You see how that compares to those who are competing, and you see the individual marbles, a handful of captains in the group, but it will be Yelly from Mellow Yellow who will start things off, just as they did in the last event, and that is a decent launch. The Marble League record, by the way, in this event has been reset because this is a different setup compared to the last time that this event was featured back in the 2017 Marble League, and it's an 82.0 for Yelly. Ocean from the Oceanics, first of our captains, with a spray of sand on the landing and a very clean takeoff as well. You can just see the intensity as they launch in that slow-mo. Just shy of that green, the number on the left, by the way, the marble name is their current ranking, so Ocean provisionally in second. Bolt from the Thunderbolts. Trying to get out past 80. And did, depending on the measurement here, how close was it? Very close, in fact. An 81.65. Not even four millimeters short. Wasp from the Hornets. Staring down that ramp. That seemed to be a much flatter angle of takeoff. What did that translate to? Oh, and that's going to be well short of 85. That's going to be well short of 80, in fact. 78, 7, 0. Our first ones, and look at how close it was. 81, 6, 0 to 81, 6, 5. Mimo is off and away. Not a bad angle there, and a pretty good landing. 81, 2, 0. From Momo. Velocity from Savage Speeders. An interesting choice going with Velocity. To end up a high takeoff. And all bunched right in there. Oh, that is very close. 81 8 0 for the Savage Speeders. Billy from the Green Ducks coming up next. Green Ducks, by the way, in the overall standings, have seen a little bit of up and down from them. Currently sitting in 10th. That one just a little bit past 80. And needed just slightly more in the tank. Anarchy from Balls of Chaos, who sit right above the Green Ducks in the standings overall. Also, yet to get a medal. Look at that spray. And also, so many of these marbles have been going perfectly straight forward. Oh, and that's first! 82-6-0! That straightness really translating to distance, as now a 6 millimeter lead for the Balls of Chaos over Mellow Yellow. B from the Bumblebees. with wings alight. And a landing somewhere in the neighborhood of 80. It ends up being just short at a 79.85. Another captain in the lineup, Hazy from the Hazers. That didn't look too bad at all. Hazers sitting in the top half of the standings in seventh right now, just after the last event. They jumped one to get up into that spot. How about Team Galactic? Seven spots gained after the last event. This one, an 81 even. Speaking of Team Galactic, our hosts after run 11 of 16. Good speed coming down the ramp on that one. What does it translate to in distance? That's pretty good. 
81-3-5. Well, maybe not as good from that angle. Wispy, the captain of the Midnight Wisps. A team that sits solidly in fifth. Just one medal to their name thus far. Chasing the O-Rangers and the Minty Maniacs. And an 80.90 will put the Wisps in ninth. Four yet to go. Rangers, Minty Maniacs, Crazy Cat Size, Raspberry Racers are top four in the standings overall. And what can Rizzy do? A little bit flatter of a launch angle, perhaps. With the spray of sand, the official look at that right there looking down the line. And a 79-4-0, not what the Raspberry Racers had hoped. That puts them in lowly 12th. Blue Eye. Carrying the hopes of our third place, Crazy Cat's Eyes. Well, that's going to be pretty good. In fact, that's going to be number one, 83-3-0. The Crazy Cat's Eyes have taken over the top spot. Minty Swirl from the Minty Maniacs just saw that feat, chasing the 83-3. How close is it going to be for our currently P2? in the overall standings, and that's going to be well back. Just a ninth place result on an 81-2-0. All the field is so bunched up. It all comes down to Mandarin for the O-Rangers. Will it be another gold for the O-Rangers? It's a decent jump, but no, it will not. Just 12. 80.80 is not enough to topple the crazy cat's eyes who get the gold over Balls of Chaos and Mellow Yellow Savage Speeders. Resurgent in fourth and 25 points to the crazy cat's eyes. And that will make them purr. Just their second medal of these games and it's gold. And for their efforts, a $5,000 donation will be made for the Food Bank for New York City. Crazy Cat's Eyes name. Congratulations to them. Thanks also to Last Week Tonight for making that happen. These top four teams have been extremely consistent thus far, and the Minty Maniacs have vaulted up into the top spot by just three points. Balls of Chaos make a climb of five places while the Crazy Cat's Eyes sit in third. Next event coming on the 16th will be the five meter hurdles, and we hope that you'll join us for the next event of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. As the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, reaches event six, who will be jumping for joy at the end of the five meter hurdles. Hello everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Welcome to the Andromeda Dome, as the course set up for a technical, tricky, and physical blast to the finish. The five meter sprint mixed with hurdles, as King Stardust will show from lane number one. The goal here, Stay off the walls if you can. Try to be in the middle of the track when you reach the hurdle. Otherwise, it's gonna slow you down doubly with the friction from the wall and from the hurdle itself. Cross the line first, and you will advance from your heat. Team Galactic, their king, ever the sport. Just given a try for him. As we get ready for heat number one with Momo, Minty Maniacs, Team Galactic, and the Oceanics, and the Oceanics and Minty Maniacs strong out of the gate, but looking through the hurdles as it changes to Team Galactic. They're running away with it. Minty Maniacs will get second. Two captains in that one, neither of them win the heat. Despite that slow start from Team Galactic, they had it where it counted as they worked their way through the hurdles. And a several length victory. Oceanics coming in last behind Momo. Next up, Balls of Chaos, Green Ducks, the Hornets, and the Crazy Cat's Eyes, who are fresh off of a gold medal. And it's the Hornets who are quick out. They lead, and it stretches. Balls of Chaos, watch down at the bottom, Crazy Cat's Eyes. They're going to make a move and get the win by 25 thousandths of a second. The Hornets just getting hung up ever so slightly. But the third to last and second to last hurdles smooth throughout were the crazy cat's eyes. And they will cross the line first. Referees in their comfy chairs, keeping a close eye on everything. Raspberry Racers, O'Rangers, Mellow Yellow, and the Thunderbolts. 
It's Mellow Yellow and Raspberry Racers neck and neck, but Racers are going to stretch it out. If they stay clear, they're going to have a huge victory. And it is. In fact, it's a new Marble League record. 8-4-3-9. What a job to set a new record. That was a close battle, by the way, for second place. As we look at the slow-mo line on the cam, well, Rangers definitely took it. Mellow Yellow fell back to fourth. Excellent job on just an early heat to get that record. Savage Speeders, Hazers, Midnight Wisps, and the Bumblebees. Midnight Wisps, quick out of the gate. Savage Speeders up top, they lose out on second place. Hazers trying to make a climb for it. Watch at the bottom though. Who's actually gonna get it on top there? It could be Savage Speeders. Where did that speed come from at the end? Hazers were right in there as well. From that angle, it's gonna be tough to tell. We're gonna need to see right down the line. Here it is. Whoa, by three thousandths of a second, Wuspy gets the win from the heat. Heat coming from behind. And what might have been an easy victory up until that point. As you see the rankings by time, the bottom half of the order, 9th to 16th. Ready for semifinal A, Hornets, Team Galactic, Raspberry Racers, and the Savage Speeders. Raspberry Racers, great start. Can they keep it up? Savage Speeders, they had a little burst of speed. They're slowing down, but they're neck and neck so far. Raspberry Racers are gonna get across, and they've reset the record. Razzy gets it. Savage Speeders just hung with them and they kept station all the way down. The last two thirds of that course, their speed seemed to be increasing, but so was the Raspberry Racers. They are all a buzz, quite robust after setting the record. Crazy Cat Size, Minty Maniacs, Midnight Wisps, and the O-Rangers. And the Wisps, again, a good start, but a little bit slower than the Crazy Cat Size. Their lead continues to build hurdle after hurdle, and they'll come across the line unchallenged. Hold on. <laughs> it's another new Marble League record. Unbelievable. Falling like dominoes right now. The farther we get into this Marble League, you can tell the intensity is ratcheting up because when a new record falls, those who are about to run, they get that little extra inkling, I gotta beat that. There you see fifth to eighth. As we ready for the final. Important to note though, after that hurdles performance, they're gonna sub in Ruzzy for the final. Razzy getting some medical checks afterward. And uh, that has been allowed by the JMRC. So interesting here, how will that affect where they finish? Empty Maniacs, Raspberry Racers, Savage Speeders, Crazy Cat Size, another good start for them. But look at this, Raspberry Racers with Ruzzy, the reserve, is holding on and will get the goal. What a story there. Razzy, after careening really hard into the catch area, a little bit shaken up, and just like that, the Raspberry Racers go from the peak of performance to uncertainty, wondering if they're going to be able to carry on. But Ruzzy steps up and gets them a win. Raspberry Racers. Raspberry Racers get the gold. And with that, a $5,000 donation will be made in their name to Food Bank for the Heartland. Made possible by last week tonight. Wisps and the Speeders sharing the podium, but it's the Raspberry Racers ripe with happiness. Minty Maniacs holding a one point lead over the Arrangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Top four did not move, but certainly Raspberry Racers have to be feeling a little bit of momentum from there. We hope you'll join us for the next event in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by last week tonight with John Oliver, Block Pushing. The strength shown in Block Pushing comes not from a single marble, but from teamwork and strength as a collective which makes this event in the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, that much more interesting. Welcome back to the Andromedome, everybody, where the Minty Maniacs hold a one-point lead over the Arrangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Thanks for watching on Greg Woods. Event number seven, a tried and true one that will see Team Stardust head down the track, push the block as far as they can. You don't want too much separation, although a marble here or there can sometimes be used to push them farther in a last flourish. Two teams competing at the same time in each heat. 
but it's not really a head-to-head -head between them because out of two heats, they will take the best individual run to count toward the championship. Otherwise, it's just bragging rights. Crazy cat size and balls of chaos, off they come and nearly pushing the block out of the track is the crazy cat size. You can see that red marker, by the way, between 80 and 85. That is the record that they're trying to beat. So crazy cat size gets a 70-50 compared to 67-65 for the balls of chaos. Thunderbolts and the Minty Maniacs now. Minty Maniacs holding that top spot in the standings, doing just enough to stay out in front, but not enough here in this heat. It's the Thunderbolts, and we'll get the better of them out towards 75. Look at the chaos over in the Thunderbolts lane, jostling back and forth side to side, not quite what they wanted. If they could get that patched up and push it forward, they may have had a go at that record. You can see also the numbers after the, the push. That is a provisional spot where they are in the standings. Oceanics and the Hornets. Oceanics kept much tighter together, but it's the Hornets that had more speed coming down the ramp. Look at all of the bumps that they had. Really, the Oceanics only had one or two, and then they almost got sideways, but it was one after another for the Hornets. One, two, three, four more that they just kept careening into each other. 76-80. Hornets take the top spot for now. Green Ducks, who desperately need a good finish, and Mellow Yellow, same can be said for them. And appropriately, it's close between them. Who gets the better of them? It's neck and neck, or even at this last little push, I think the Green Ducks are gonna hold on. Very close, just a centimeter between them. Green Ducks move to second for now. They gotta feel pretty happy with that. And especially these early runs, I have to think it's more about the team on the other side of the wall from you than it will be later. It's driving you further, but the second round is gonna be different. Savage Speeders, Midnight Wisps are next up. 81.8, the mark to beat. Oh, and that's very close until the end, but look at this, Midnight Wisps, they've gone past it. That's a new Marble League record. In fact, they've obliterated the old record. Savage Speeders might have come very close to it, but 85-8-0. Midnight Wisps set the new goal. Nearly a marble and a half in front of the mark, and then you get to the block. Raspberry Racers, our winners from the last event, and the O-Rangers. Oh, that one's gonna be very close. Maybe the O-Rangers by a hair. Yes, indeed. The Rangers keeping three bunched up on the block while bringing in the fourth anchor of sorts to give them whatever last flourish they need. It happens so quickly, it can be tough to parse through the different strategies. Hazers and Momo. All bunched together, they're opting for that 3-1. Momo does it to perfection, though, and gets out past 75, should be out past 76. Meanwhile, the Hazers almost launched the block out of the track. Anytime that energy is getting dissipated upward or sideways, it's not going forward. And you see that reflected in a 14th place thus far for the Hazers. Galactic and the Bumblebees. Ooh, even though the Bumblebees got off to a better start, it was Team Galactic came from behind and added a bit at the end. That's getting them close to 80. Good enough provisionally for third. So there we see the results of run number one. 85-80, well clear of the field by four centimeters. Balls of chaos in the crazy cat's eyes. Line up again. Even separation between them, but the result again goes the way of the crazy cat's eyes. They have been very consistent throughout. Both this event and the games as a whole. You can see how it compares to their first runs. Minty Maniacs and the Thunderbolts up now. Fairly even for them as well, and it's a decently even result, but again, the Minty Maniacs are going to get the win between them. How does it compare? Again, you see a little bit of that chaos on the bottom lane, and the Minty Maniacs. Not great. They did improve, but for our championship leaders, not where they want to be.
Hornets and the Oceanics, two teams that are at the bottom of the order overall in the Marble League. 14th and 15th for the Hornets and Oceanics respectively. And let's get a look down the line here and see where this ends up. Oh, that is so even right at the end. It will be the Hornets, just barely. Half a centimeter, maybe. Marble League prides itself on being exact with their measurements. That's why they have so many referees down there. And actually, both of the runs are worse. So no improvement. Mellow Yellow and the Green Ducks, can they improve on their first runs? Mellow Yellow does get the win between them, but this is, in the second runs especially, less about bragging rights and more about where you're going to finish in the overall standings. Oh, and again, the second runs, markedly worse. Green Ducks sitting middle of the pack. I think they'll take that for now, considering they're 12th in the standings. 32 points compared to Minty Maniac's 91. So only a handful have gotten better. Let's see if the Wisps and the Speeders can do it. They were great in the first one, not great here. A lot of energy being dissipated perhaps in that first go. And it just stopped for them, barely in the neighborhood of 70. It's going to be disappointing for both of them. Look at how big of a difference it was. 85, almost 86, down to not breaking 70. Oh, Rangers and Raspberry Racers. They hit the blocks with a flurry and get out past 80, have the O-Rangers. That'll set them up well. Taking the block in the lane, using that fourth anchor marble to give that final extra distance. Raspberry Racers at the bottom looking a little bit disjointed. It is an improvement for both, and in fact, the O-Rangers move up to second place. And with only a few marbles left to go, it might be working out well for them. Oh, wow, that was very disjointed. In fact, absolutely chaotic. We nearly had marbles switching places. The Hazers, dead last. 55-3-5, that is not better. Not so for Team Momo. They move up the standings. And so it comes down to this final heat. Our leaders are guaranteed a medal, even if these two break that mark. Will they? No. Not even close. Not even 65 and not 75, so Team Galactic will settle in at a fifth place. And given the host's curse that ever hangs over the Marble League, I think they're going to be happy with that. Who's happier? The Midnight Wisps. Marble League record, Marble League gold. Well done to Momo. Lurching up there in the second place, and the O-Rangers, who are second place team in the Marble League thus far, get a good points haul out of it. And for winning gold, the Midnight Wisps will have a $5,000 donation made in their name to Gleaners Community Food Bank of Southeastern Michigan. Congratulations to them. Thank you also to Last Week Tonight for making that possible. The two heat block pushing gives us a little bit of a mix up in the standings. The O'Rangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes both jump the Minty Maniacs. Midnight Wisp move up into fourth. It's still bunched up at the top. The best part about the triathlon is you get three events squished into one. And the winner is the one who can manage all three disciplines the best. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Welcome to event eight in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. A sand track, a Marbula One style circuit, and final part, an underwater race. As King Stardust, ever keen to try all of these events, we'll get things going. Onto the Marbula One style circuit, essing its way downward. A little chevron right before the drop, pick up a lot of speed, and then underwater we go. As if you weren't gassed at that point enough, you have to meander the dangerous currents underneath to make your way to the bottom. Team Galactic, the Hornets, Crazy Cat's Eyes, and Balls of Chaos get things started here, and it is Galactic entering the circuit first. Hornets. 
close behind, and then a good battle developing between Balls of Chaos and Crazy Cat's Eyes. But you don't want to jostle too much because you're expending the energy that you may need to get you going through the hardest part of the course, the underwater section. You can see the speed drop to a crawl. The Hornets are trying to get a little draft as they move to the right side of your screen as you look at it now. They're approaching the finish line. Have the Hornets taken the lead? Yes, they have, and they will cross first. The captain of the Hornets puts in a 32-10. Nearly four-tenths ahead of Pulsar for Team Galactic, and a good run for them. A lot of intricacies to this event. Mellow Yellow, Momo, Green Ducks, Savage Speeders up now. Entering the sand portion. Ooh, and banging from side to side. Ooh, and a sharp impact there with the Savage Speeders and Mellow Yellow. That puts Mellow Yellow well adrift off the back of the pack. Momo. Up front, Green Ducks going to try to make a move on Savage Speeders, hopefully, as they enter the water. They're going to be side by side, well spread out at that, as we look underneath. This is a very close battle for second place. Momo is going to win, but who will get second? Mellow Yellow is not going to catch up, so it's going to be the Savage Speeders. Just a couple of tenths at most in front of the captain of the Green Ducks right at the finish line there. Mellow Yellow, difficulties continue. They sit at the bottom of the standings, even with one medal. Not where they want to be. Heat 3, the Thunderbolts, Minty Maniacs, O-Rangers, and the Raspberry Racers. And the O-Rangers get off to a good start. Raspberry Racers have some difficulty, and it looked like the O-Rangers hit the edge of the circuit track as they entered it. Look at the draft, the Thunderbolts. Step for step they are. A little shoulder back from the O-Rangers. Gives some separation. Minty Maniacs are going to try to take advantage of that. Well, Rangers first into the water, but they're very slow. Minty Maniacs fall to last. Dropping off first. It is the O-Rangers. Thunderbolt's going to try to get a little bit of a draft. Can they move to the side? Not in time. Those two will come through first and will advance. Minty Drizzle and Ruzzy. Close behind, but not close enough. The Rangers leading the standings. Two golds, a silver, and a bronze. Hazers, Bumblebees, Midnight Wisps, and the Oceanics. Bumblebees off to the lead, suddenly jerk to the left, and now fall to dead last. The Oceanics take the top spot, desperately wanting to do well in a water event. For once, it must be this time they have to think. Their coach has been prepping them like crazy for this. It's more of a mental thing than anything, but they're gonna lose it as they drop into the water. The Hazers come up first. Will they lose second place as well to the Wisps? They're gonna try to block them, but the Wisps, more speed. They're gonna get by and they will advance. Oh, Shore from the Oceanics cannot get it done. And the Bumblebees coming in last. Hazers pretty amazed with that, sitting in 10th in the standings. They need to get something going and quickly. As we take a look at the bottom of the order based on time, Coach Mello has to do something to get a little bit more out of Mellow Yellow in the upcoming events. He cannot keep going on like this. In the meantime, up top, we have the first semifinal. The Hornets, the Midnight Wisps, the Savage Speeders, and the O-Rangers. Midnight Wisps had the lead, but the O-Rangers were able to navigate the sand course much more cleanly. Savage Speeders holding in second place, trying to block and keep everybody behind. The Rangers lead come down just a little bit as they drop and enter the final stretch. Now into the water. Top two will advance, but the second place battle is a three-way heat. Now it cools off just a little bit. O Rangers still holding the lead. It's the Hornets. Both will advance to the final. Waspy and Rapidly come in next. And what will inevitably be the battle for fifth place. The other part of that battle will be the third and fourth place finishers in the second heat. That sand portion, devilishly tricky. And shoot you side to side instantly. Momo, Thunderbolts, Hazers, and Team Galactic, our hosts. And it's Galactic who fall out to last place. They have some ground to make up, and they do! Trouble getting onto the track gets Galactic into second place behind the Hazers. Hazers not even looking over their shoulder at this point, just trying to focus on what's ahead of them. A lot of ground to be made up from third and fourth place right now. 
A great entry into the water by the Hazers and Galactic. If they can keep that speed up, they will advance to the final, but watch third place there. Momo is creeping up just a little bit. Speed is increasing as they drift toward the center of the track. Are they gonna make the move? They do, but it's too late. I think it's too late for Momo. Look at the, just at the last second they pulled out to try to get around. And we'll wait for the photo finish here. Super slow-mo, necessary. Oh, they got it! I think they did! By one hundredth of a second, Team Momo advances. Galactic gets fifth place. Decent result, but oh, right down to the wire. Great use of understanding fluid dynamics to make that move in the draft. Our top four, who will win gold? Hazers bumped hard, fall to last place. The Rangers trying to track down the Hornets up ahead. Momo in third place. Can they pull off a come from behind once more? Dropping down the slide for the final time as they enter the water. It's anybody's race at this point. The O'Rangers make a move for the lead. Momo is going to try their same draft. They do. They close up almost too quickly. But now they can make a move for the lead. And they do. Everybody is right up there. The Hazers shoulder on through and will get the goal. It's officially going to be a photo finish. But while Momo and the O'Rangers were fighting, the Hazers said, pardon me, I'm coming through. Foggy gets the win by a tenth of a second over Momo. Orangin comes in third. Stinger, the captain of the Hornets, picks up 12 points in fourth place. And what a job to navigate the water. It was arguably the most difficult part here. The Hazers pick up the win, and for their victory, a $5,000 donation will be made in their name to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Thank you for making that happen. We'll see you last week tonight. Lug the podium up to the sand portion. Looks like I'd be a little extra work, but I guess better than being underwater. As they revel, Momo, what a job snatching advancement from the jaws of relegation. The O'Rangers still hold the top spot, but Midnight Wisps now move into a tie with Crazy Cat's Eye for second place. Minty Maniacs close behind. Please remember to subscribe and stay tuned for more. In order to capture Marble League glory, you must be prepared for every contingency, every possible media, and every possible surface, including the sand moguls. Hey everybody. I'm Greg Woods. Welcome to Event 9 of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Here in the Andromeda Dome, an undulating course that will test our marbles in a slightly different way. As you see King Stardust attempt this downward, winding, bumpy pathway. You've got to absorb the shocks, absorb the impacts, read the course well, and choose your path wisely. If you hope to be the winner of this event, in route to a possible Marble League Championship. Our first heat, and it's the Oceanics out in front. Minty Maniacs holding in second place. They draw up on them just a little bit, but the bottom of this course comes at you quickly, and by a tenth of a second, the captain from the Oceanics pips the captain of the Minty Maniacs. Oceanics, there's been so much talk after the last event and another disappointment in the water events. They're trying to get their heads on straight, and make a comeback here. You wonder how much that's going to be weighing on them in an event that is very much the opposite of a water event. It's on the dry sand. Heat 2. Crazy Cat's Eyes. Balls of Chaos. Green Ducks and Team Momo. And it's Crazy Cat's Eyes out in front. Green Ducks make a move for second place but fall all the way back to last. Momo will get the win in front of Crazy Cat's Eyes. Momo, they have been trending well of late. Green Ducks just getting out of sorts and bumping the wall, and that completely put them on the wrong trajectory. And they fell to last. Goes to show you, there is no one single pathway that you have to take going down this course. You have to adapt. You have to move back and forth. Savage Speeders, are they going to illustrate that here? A little nudge from the Bumblebees. Galactic takes second place. Here come the Midnight Wisps. Oh, and an impact there will give the Bumblebees advancement. Savage Speeders win the heat, but the Bumblebees just got it done. They were drafting on them. 
Here comes Team Galactic, here comes Midnight Wisp. Look at them, they're nearly in last place. But a great end of the course, and a little shoulder there. Make sure that the Bumblebees will be moving on. Hopefully that didn't sting too much. Thunderbolts, Hazers, Mellow Yellow, and the Hornets. Hazers out in front after that fantastic victory in the last event, and they're just stretching it. Nobody's gonna challenge them at all. What a run by Hazy. Yellow did well to move out of the heat also. After a brief challenge there, but smooth and steady, reading the moguls well. Hazy comes across the line with plenty of room to spare. Same for yellow. I gotta feel pretty good about that. There you see ninth through 16th. Green Ducks, difficulty continues. But Mellow Yellow, they've been on the bottom of the standings. They've got a great chance here to make up for that. It's Savage Speeders out in front. Crazy cat signs. They're gonna lose out to the Oceanics just briefly. Oh, hard impact, shoots the Oceanics to the front and they win the semifinal. Calculated or unplanned, it worked perfectly. A little bump there from Mellow Yellow puts him in contention for second place. Good move back by Crazy Cat Size, but the impact put all of that energy forward and the Oceanics charging forward like a tsunami get across the line and we'll move on with the Savage Speeders. Semi-final B, Hazers, Momo, Minty Maniacs, and the Bumblebees in some difficulty coming on to the course. Minty Maniacs weaving back and forth. Here comes Momo into second pace past the Hazers, but the Hazers get him back at the line. 600th of a second, and the Minty Maniacs are moving to the final along with the Hazers. Three gold medals between those two teams alone. It was very close at the line, but the Hazers made the move just in the nick of time. So see how bumpy this course is. There are the rankings, fifth to eighth. A good finish for Mellow Yellow. They've got to be happy with that. They're finally going to get some decent points. Still, a good chunk of this Marble League to go. Oceanics, Savage Speeders, Hazers, and the Minty Maniacs. Also some difficulty coming out of the course, but it's the Oceanics out in front. But for how long? The Hazers are challenging. Minty Maniacs are challenging. Nobody's going to get by. Redemption for the Oceanics. It's anybody's race at this point. That slight impact, and nobody could make the move from there. Oceanics get the gold. Hazers the silver, and Minty Maniacs the bronze. How thrilled are the Oceanics after that? Only one team ran a sub eight run and ended up being your silver medalists. The Oceanics find some redemption, find some gold, and find themselves on the $5,000 donation to the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, made possible by last week tonight will be made in the Oceanics name. Not sure they were expecting that. Just gives them a little extra element of Tide Pride. The Orangers hold the top spot. Minty Maniacs just edge out Crazy Cat's Eyes for second. Midnight Wisps fall to fourth. Still a lot up for grabs here in the Marble League 2020. Sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Buckle up because the five meter sprint is a blast of speed that comes at you quicker than you can say five meter sprint. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Stardust, not gonna be out there doing a test of this. He's actually in a fan photo session, but good thing is it's fairly straightforward. You run down the track, you cross the finish line and that's pretty much it. I would do it myself, but I'm up in the commentary box and it's a little bit of a trek to get down there. All right, our first heat with the Savage Speeders, Balls of Chaos, Raspberry Racers, and the Hornets. And it's the Speeders and Racers out in front and will advance out of the first heat. Velocity comes through with a 6106. You can see quick out of the gate were the Hornets, but just unable to sustain that speed as they jostle back and forth between the edges of their lane. You see it even down here, they're still bouncing back and forth. That's definitely an example of what you don't want to do if you want to win in the sprint. Bumblebees, Team Galactic, the Oceanics, 
and Mellow Yellow. Bumblebee's great start on the upper lane. Galactic in second, but with speed in the bottom part of the course, they get the win. Who got second? It's the Oceanics. Barely, about a hundredth of a second was all that separated them. Very slow start for Mellow Yellow here. Oceanics and Galactic start building speed. At about this point is when the Oceanics kick it in. By then, Galactic's too far gone. Ooh, nearly a photo finish for second place. The Hazers, Momo, Minty Maniacs, and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Minty Maniacs, a good launch out of the gate, but the Hazers respond well and stretch the lead. They'll cruise to a victory. And hold on, that's a new Marble League record. The Hazers broke the world record set back in 2015. That's a record that stood for a long time and several Marble Leagues. Phenomenal performance. That will, at this point, earn them a record and advancement. Will it earn them a medal as we continue on? Midnight Wisp, Thunderbolts, O-Rangers, and the Green Ducks. Oh, Green Ducks hanging on in second place. Can they hold on to it from the O-Rangers? They will. Thunderbolts get the win. But that's pertinent because the Green Ducks have had a terrible time in this Marble League. They had the lead just barely. Thunderbolts retake it here, but then the eyes shift to that battle for second. And I think Green Ducks got him. Yes, they did. And it was closer up front than I thought it was. Three thousandths of a second between Bolt and Billy. The thing is, both will advance as we take a look at the bottom of the order for this event in Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight, with John Oliver. Well, Yellow continues to be down there at the bottom, second to last. We're going to be having some big discussions within that team tonight. Semi-final A, Oceanics, Green Ducks, Savage Speeders, and the Hazers. Oceanics stretching it again. And can you believe it? The Oceanics have reset the record. We've had it fall again. And after a great performance in the Moguls, the Oceanics have come to play. Versus who got second place. I think it's Savage Speeders. But the Oceanics with a Marble League record. It is Savage Speeders by one thousandth of a second. Velocity Pip Smoggy. The marbles are looking sharp today. As sharp as round marbles can, but anyway, semi-final B. Thunderbolts, Minty Maniacs, Galactic and the Raspberry Racers. Minty Maniacs out in front. Is anybody going to get some speed down to the bottom of the course to challenge? They will not. Minty Fresh gets it over the captain of the Raspberry Racers. And those two will be moving on to the final. A pretty even race between those top three, especially second and third right there with Galactic and the Racers. Bouncing back and forth, those little bumps off the wall, all it took to make the difference. Minty Maniacs will cruise on through with the racers as we get ready for the final. Fifth through eighth. Astron from Team Galactic finishing in seventh. We're going to have that discussion at some point about when the host curse is dead. I don't know. All right, the final. Oceanics, Raspberry Racers, Minty Maniacs, and Savage Speeders. Speeders are quickest out of the gate. Minty Maniacs building speed. Are they gonna pass him? Yes, they will, but watch on the top lane. This may be a photo finish. The Oceanics tasted it once. Now they've got gold fever. They want more. It's neck and neck up top. Minty Maniacs pull out the lead. Watch the Oceanics up on the first lane. Minty Maniacs get the gold. Oceanics with the silver by two thousandths of a second. Savage Speeders get third. And the bronze, Raspberry Racers. Come close, but still get 12 points. What a finish. The Minty Maniacs have performed beautifully over the course of this Marble League. They were rewarded once more by standing on the top spot of the podium and the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank will receive a $5,000 donation in their name. Minty Maniacs. Jump the O-Rangers to take a nine-point lead at the top of the standings. Crazy Cat's Eyes remain in third, just in front of the Midnight Wisps. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more.
In space, no one can hear you scream. But here inside of the Andromedome, there will be plenty of that as we get ready for Event 11 in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, the Black Hole Fun. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This will be an interesting one with speeds that pick up astronomically once they pass the point of no return, which in black hole parlance is usually the event horizon, as we see King Stardust and one of his star crew get us started here. All right, I'm not gonna continue those puns through the course of this whole event, but you see the speed really pick up here. There can still be shouldering for position, back and forth, collisions, especially in the upper part of the funnel. But once you get this speed, you have to stay composed because otherwise you'll be feeling pretty sick when you get to the bottom of this one. As we get our first run, we see two members of each of four teams descend into the funnel and begin those wider pathways. The better to keep you in the funnel the longest. It looks like the O-Rangers are doing the best job of that right now, but we'll have to see where it comes down. Bumblebees, Hazers, look at this. Clementon and Tangerine get the win. At this point, those two orange marbles doing the best job. Five seconds clear of the field, passing the 22nd mark for one of those. It gives us a little idea about the mark to beat. The Rangers. I'm feeling pretty good with that. We get ready for the second heat. Down they come. Spinning all around, and ooh, it just shows to show you how easily you can transition from that far outside line to being shot downward immediately. A couple of green hued marbles in there. Momo is one of them. The green ducks are the other. But Momo has had one through already. Both Hornets are out. Momo Momo comes through in a 1940. We've got past 20 seconds for Crazy Cat's Eyes. Both of the green ducks, in fact, nearly getting up toward 30, and we will surpass it for our winner of this run, Red Eye, the captain of the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Heck of a job there. 55-72 is the number to beat thus far, and Crazy Cat's Eyes sitting in third in the championship right now. A little gap developing between the Minty Maniacs and the O'Rangers up front, but a pretty close midfield once you get down much farther than that. Green Ducks, doing pretty good with a two marble performance, also in that solid range. Yellow Yellow, Midnight Wisps, Oceanics, and the Raspberry Racers descend now. Just a few minor little collisions coming off the ramp. You hear some clicking as they start to enter the fastest point of the funnel when everything turns into a blur. You can hardly tell which marble is which, but it looks like the Midnight Wisps are in good position from what I can tell. Both Mellow Yellows, both Raspberry Racers are through, both Oceanics, which only leaves both Midnight Wisps. What will the times be? Neither one past 30. Two very different lines being taken by the Wisps upon entering the black hole. And at this point, look at how well ahead both of them are, but a 47.53 puts them provisionally third. Remember, these aren't so much heats, even though I may have said that earlier, as proper timed runs. Midnight Wisps. Team sitting in fourth in the standings. Down they come here. Minty Maniacs, Savage Speeders, Team Galactic, our hosts, and the Thunderbolts. Three captains among them. Only Minty Drizzle is not in there in the captains group. Minty Mint drops on through. There is Minty Drizzle. Thunderbolts coming next along with Team Galactic. Savage Speeders running well here. They're going to finish both of their marbles last. Can they keep it going past 30? Yes, they will, just barely. 3106 for the captain. The other non-captains in this run, by the way, Minty Mint, Rapidly, Pulsar, and Lightning, along with Minty Drizzle. There's both Galactics, both Thunderbolts, both Savage Speeders at that point, and their total is good enough to put Savage Speeders on top. In run four of eight, that's where they stand. Savage Speeders have to be feeling good with that, and that bolsters their chances just a little bit. And run up to getting perhaps a podium here in the Marble League. They sit in seventh thus far. 
in the overall standings. And you can see the differentials that we have as we descend down once again. Balls of Chaos, Bumblebees, Hazers, and the O'Rangers. The four teams taking place in this one. The O'Rangers seem to be positioned pretty well thus far. If you look on the left, you can see the elevation that they have in the funnel as they begin to work their way down. Both Balls of Chaos are done. Both Hazers are done. One of the O'Rangers now. Both O'Rangers. And the Bumblebees with B finishing last, but a 24-8-3 is well off the pace for some of the runs that we've seen thus far. The O'Rangers, provisionally up in P1 right now, but a lot of teams left to run. We know that mark to beat, though, is past 81 for the cumulative total. It gives you a little something to shoot for. And look at how beat they are once they get down there. I imagine they'll be spinning for days after this one, but they've got to regroup because more events in the Marble League are coming. And six of eight, 81, nine, eight is the overall time to beat. It's Crazy Cat's Eyes, Green Ducks, the Hornets, and Team Momo, just two captains in this heat, Momo Momo and Red Eye. Red Eye finished on top, the last run between them. No finishers quite yet, but we should have one already. There we go, Momo and the Green Ducks coming through in a very quick time, that's not what you want. Crazy Cat's Eyes, both Hornets are done now, both Crazy Cat's Eyes are done. Momo Momo gets a 22-3-2, and Quacky at 25-2-7, I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. Great trajectories coming in. But once they all get down in there, it's a bottleneck. You almost wonder if it's gonna be stopped at some point because all the marbles are trying to get through. But look at this crazy cat size, they have done enough. They carry their great total from round one into round two, and they move to the lead. It's tough to tell as it's happening, the crazy cat size staring off. Wondering, are they going to be able to hold on? As we get ready for the penultimate run. Raspberry Racers are descending down there. Midnight Wisps appear to be well positioned with both of their marbles. I think there's a Mellow Yellow up there also. Raspberry Racers and Oceanics drop one through. Both Racers and Oceanics are done. Mellow Yellow, 18-7. That's not bad for Yella. Wespy comes through past the 20 mark. Yelly, nearly 23, and Wispy, the captain for the Midnight Wisps, is the last to descend through the black hole and does enough. 95-5-6 takes the Midnight Wisps to the top spot. They can finish no lower than fifth with one more run to go. And that's pretty good for this team who currently sit two points off the podium spot right now. They've got to be feeling pretty good with this and also Hat tip to Mellow Yellow. They sit at the bottom of the standings, but regardless of how the next one goes, they're gonna be guaranteed a top 10 finish today. The final run. We can dethrone those at the top spot. Minty Maniac, Savage Speeders, Team Galactic, and the Thunderbolts. They're getting to the event horizon pretty quickly. Spinning around, disappearing into a blur. The first one through is the Thunderbolts. Minty Maniacs, both Thunderbolts are done. Both Maniacs are done. Still a lot of speed up top though as the Savage Speeders drop their captain through. Team Galactic comes next rapidly and then Pulsar. 25-3-0, the best time among them. How does the math work out? The Savage Speeders have done enough. They win the Black Hole Funnel event. Rapidly and speedy team up to go slowest, but that's what you want here. The Savage Speeders were on it from the get-go 58-3-2, it was a big drop-off to the second run, but it was seven clear of the Midnight Wisps who get the silver. Bronze going to the Crazy Cat's Eyes. They continue to perform well in the Marble League, but it's the Savage Speeders standing atop the podium, and it will be their name on a $5,000 donation to the San Antonio Food Bank. Possible by last week tonight, the Rangers hold the top spot by a single point now. They have gotten above the Minty Maniacs. The Wisps come next. Then it's Crazy Cat's Eyes as we get ready for the relay run. We're coming down the home stretch in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Today, the relay run, an event that combines pure speed with teamwork. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Four lanes, 
and you will have handoffs to deal with, chances for plenty of things to go wrong, but also chances to dig deep, see how your competitors are doing beside you, and a sprint to the finish as illustrated by Team Stardust and Team Rolliver. The first handoff, very important to set the tone. The bottom handoffs, the key to getting the win. The anchor coming home to perhaps give you Marble League glory. Crazy Cat's Eyes, Savage Speeders, The Oceanics, and Mellow Yellow. Very slow start for the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Great first leg for Savage Speeders, but Oceanics coming through in the bottom couple. Savage Speeders aren't going to challenge them. And it's a new Marble League record, in fact. They beat the old record with only two one thousandths of a second. And I believe that's the first time we've ever seen a record like that broken in the very first heat of an event. Savage Speeders would have done well enough to win any other year, but Oceanics finding their footing. Let's hope they didn't burn too much energy for later heats. Well, the heats, but the Oceanics looked pretty cool there. Minty Maniacs, Team Galactic, the Bumblebees, and Momo. Bumblebees out in front, but the next handoff gives it to Momo. Can the anchor leg bring it home? Yes. Team Momo, by 31 thousandths, gets by Team Galactic, who were sitting last at this point in the replay. They're now in third, but it's the anchor leg that elevates them one more spot, making all the difference between relegation and advancement. Bumblebee's sitting toward the bottom of the order they could have used. Moving on, Momo down in ninth. They're fine with that. Balls of Chaos, Green Ducks. The Hazers and the O'Rangers. Hazers get a good start. Balls of Chaos on the top lane. It's anybody's race at this point until the O'Rangers stamp their authority in the bottom two handoffs and reset the record. They didn't just reset it, in fact, they obliterated it. A sub eight second run and the O'Rangers have a mark that may be pretty difficult to beat. Hazers will advance with them, but well, a drift off the back. Our current leaders in the Marble League set the time to beat the Wisps, Raspberry Racers, the Hornets and the Thunderbolts. The Wisps out in front of the top lane, stretching it through the first couple of handoffs. The race for second is heating up though, and now the anchor leg stumbles, and the win goes to the Racers. The Hornets also get by. It all came undone on the final handoff. Everything going so well here, but difficulty transitioning to the anchor and two great handoffs from the Racers and the Hornets. The Hornets sitting in 15th in the standings. They need that. Look at this. Crazy Cat's Eyes, Minty Maniacs, Mellow Yellow rounding out the bottom. Balls of Chaos just missed moving on to the semifinals. The first of which coming at you now. Hazers, Momo, Raspberry Racers, and Savage Speeders. Three-way lead up top. Momo now threatens the lead. Raspberry Racers with a big burst of speed. They're going to bring it home, but who got second? That is going to be a photo finish. This swung back and forth so many times. A three marble lead there, transitions to a two. Now it's back to three. The Racers come by, get the lead. The battle is between the Speeders and Team Momo. We'll slow it down here. Can't really tell from that angle. Racers have it by about six or eight lengths, and the Savage Speeders advance. One millisecond is all the difference between the Speeders and Team Momo. On to the second semifinal. The Rangers set that top time. Oceanics, Galactic, and here come the O-Rangers again. Is this going to reset the record? If not, it's surely going to be an easy coast into the final. They didn't break eight seconds, but they did break the competition on that one. Oof. Or should I say, oh. Oceanics holding on to second just barely from Team Galactic. About a length or two. What a job by the Oceanics. They're going to be tough to beat. Heading into the final, Galactic gets fifth, Momo sixth, Hazers, and then the Hornets. But eight hundredths down from that next spot. Raspberry Racers, Savage Speeders, O'Rangers and the Oceanics. Raspberry Racers and O'Rangers are out in front. The O'Rangers have done it again, but here come the Speeders in the lane right next to them. 
It's going to be the Savage Speeders that get the win. Well back of the field through that handoff, still in fourth. Fantastic transition there, and the anchor leg, I think, is going to bring it home. Yes, they will. The Savage Speeders have done it again. After the last event, they jumped two spots up into fifth. We're going to jump a little more here in a close battle between the O'Rangers and the Oceanics. Despite the Marble League record, the O'Rangers couldn't get the gold. That honor goes to the Savage Speeders. The Rangers, silver. Oceanics, the bronze. Congratulations to our top three finishers. Fantastic job by them. And for getting gold, a $5,000 donation will be made in the Savage Speeder's name to the Second Harvest Food Bank of Greater New Orleans and Acadiana. Just a quarter of the Marble League left to go, and it's a 10-point lead for the O'Rangers. But the Savage Speeders are within striking distance, really as are the Minty Maniacs and the Midnight Wisps. Mellow Yellow cannot win it. Event 13 of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, takes us to new and dizzying heights. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Welcome to the High Jump. Did you know, by the way, that 55% of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel? Make sure you're with us for the final few events. Click subscribe. Take a look at uh, King Stardust here coming in under the bar. Each marble is going to have two attempts at a height. If you don't make it in that time, you're done. King Stardust came oh so close, but just for posterity, he is going to take it easy for the second jump. Divided into multiple rounds, each marble will be performing until it passes 37 centimeters at height in the first round. We'll start at 35 and a half, and Quasar from Team Galactic easily gets by. In fact, also gets by 36, 36 and a half, and 37 is the first failed attempt. These things come at you pretty quickly. We've condensed it down just a little bit. But on jump number two, Quasar gets by. 37. Now on to Raspberry Racers. 35 and a half. Easy. You know, this event is really about getting in your own head. If you mess up on the first jump, you really have to put yourself back together in order to make the second one, especially if you had that momentary lapse on an easy height you really got to focus. Ruzzy from the Raspberry Racers does not make the same mistake twice and easily gets by. Ruzzy does not make it 36.5, though, and we'll have one more attempt just a little bit off on the launch and actually doesn't make it past 36 and a half. On to the Green Ducks with Ducky. 35.5 piece of cake. Makes sense for ducks. Flying comes naturally, I suppose. Past 36, 36 and a half. Also fairly simple. Best performance by the green ducks is it gets past 37, in fact, coming on the black hole funnel just a couple of events ago, and then otherwise you have to go back to the funnel endurance when the green ducks last did well. On to the hazers, where 36 becomes the tripping point. Hit the bottom of the bar, actually, on that one, did Misty. So she's going to get another jump to pass 36, and does. Sometimes it's not a matter of ability, but sometimes focus. You can be just a little bit off when you are trying to reach the apex. Misses on 36 and a half. Second attempt coming. Cleared. Remember, if you're getting past that 36... 37 mark. You're round one. Done. On to Wizzy. 35.5 for the Savage Speeders. Oh, cleared it. And then I think came down on top of it. Yes. That's another example of just timing your arc and planning it out correctly. It make a big difference. But thankfully, Wizzy was able to put it together in the second attempt. Had the opposite problem this time, coming in at the bottom of the bar on 36. Savage Speeders, of course, sitting in second in the overall standings. Winners of the last two events, the Black Hole Funnel and the Relay Run. But 
they do not advance out of round one here. Do I sense some booze? Hmm. Captain of the crazy cat's eyes, Red Eye, stumbles on 35 and a half. I know that kind of gives them a little bit of nervousness. If you mess up on what is supposed to be the easiest one, the benchmark, but 36 comes and goes and would have had enough for 40 on that one. Sometimes overcompensation can run your energy stores dry later on in the event as the first attempt at 37 does not make it for Red Eye. Gets it on the second go, however, and the Crazy Cat's Eyes, our fifth place in the standings, make it out of round one. Aqua from the Oceanics, easy at 35.5. On to 36, and also careens over it smoothly. 36 and a half, still not a problem for Aqua. Oceanic sitting middle of the pack could use advancement. Does not make it 37 that time, but we'll have one more attempt. And it's the bottom of the bar. Oceanics do not make it past 37. Thunder from the Thunderbolts. The captain of the team sitting toward the bottom of the standings. In fact, the only three teams below the Thunderbolts, well, two of them have never been in the Marble League before, and the other one is Mellow Yellow, who's had a world of trouble. On to 37 already for Thunder. And a thwack of the bar. Ready for the second attempt. Gets it. Thunder is moving on. Dizzying heights indeed. Some of the people up in the stands are up there pretty high, but I don't think there are any poor views inside of the Andromedome as Yella clears 35.5 and 36 with plenty of height to spare and distance around the bar. 36 and a half comes and goes. Did they get out of the first round? Yes, indeed. Yella clears it. Minty Swirl from the Minty Maniacs. Not a problem. Third place team won the very first event, won the third event. Got third in the event in between. And it started to come to form a little bit more of late. Bronze in the Sand Moguls, gold in the five meter sprint, and they advance out of round one here. On to Snarl from Balls of Chaos, who easily gets by on the first go. On to 36, did not clear that one. May have had the height, just not the trajectory. Snarl tries it again, and does not make the same mistake twice. On past 36.5, in fact. Snarl, easily past 37. That was a strong showing from Balls of Chaos. Must be from the Midnight Wisps. Very consistent across this Marble League. Usually in the upper part of the standings for most of the events. In fact, got a silver back in the Black Hole Funnel. 36.5, with room to spare from Wuspy. At 37, easy. Again, this was set up because most of these heights were fairly standard for the competitors. We've seen what they have done in the past and in the practice rounds that these marbles do usually without people watching from the stands. And of course, all the training that they put in month after month gives the committee a bit of a ballpark for where to start with this. Mandarin clears 36.5, 37. Also, not a problem for the O-Rangers. On to Stinger, the captain of the Hornets. Maybe getting a little close to the bar on the approach. On both 35 and a half, ooh, and 36. Dangerously close, in fact. And it caught up to him there. Stinger just broadsides it. May have had the height. Oh, yes, indeed, had the height. 36.5. And with that same trajectory, 37 should be easy, and it is. Momo Momo. Captain for Team Momo stumbles out of the block there. Not a good height or trajectory. Shot straight upward. We'll get another attempt, and thankfully gets by. You know, I spoke to several of the teams beforehand, including Momo, and one of the things that they all told me was not to get too discouraged if you mess up on the first run. Momo looked better in the middle part of the Marble League. 
with silvers in block pushing and the triathlon. And a chance for more here as 37 comes and goes. Honey from the Bumblebees. I mentioned that they and the Hornets were first timers in the Marble League. Obviously having a lot to live up to with the show that the Green Ducks put on in their first Marble League. Bumblebees down toward the bottom of the order with the Hornets showing that one, it's not easy, and two, what the Green Ducks did was pretty tremendous. Honey gets by 37, and they'll be moving on. There you can see how everyone did in the opening round. Savage speeders. Pretty shocked at that, but now we'll start the second round because there's still 13 marbles left with a pretty big chance that the Marble League record could be broken. That one goes back, by the way, to 2017. Our hosts get us going. 37.5. 38. How high can Team Galactic go? Did not make it at 38.5, but we'll have another chance at it. Team Galactic, experts at finishing fifth in the Marble League. But gets it on jump two, and that does beat the record of Yella from 2017. The new record will be assigned, of course, after everything is done, because there's still a lot of competitors left to go. But for now, there you have it. 38 for Ducky from the Green Ducks. Can't get it at 38.5. Bottom of the order, listen to the crowd, still buzzing from that. And does get it at 38.5. All right, that's where we will hold them. And then we'll go on to the next round for those that clear 38.5. Misty, a lot of spin. Get it on the second try? No. The Hazers will be stopped at 37.5. Red Eye. Comes up for Crazy Cat's Eyes and and nudges the edge of the bar. Wasn't quite a bottom hit. Needs just a little bit more height. And gets it. With some to spare, in fact. Red Eye will have a go at 38 now. Same problem as the first run. Decent spin, decent height. Just gotta get that launch angle and can't do it. Crazy Cat's eyes are done. Our fifth place runners in the Marble League. Means there's a chance for some other teams to make some progress. Could the captain of the Thunderbolts be one of them? Thunder clears 37.5. A little bit to spare. 38. No, went under the bar completely. Didn't even hit it. Had the height, but just way off on the angle. And uh, as a result, Thunderbolts, they're also done. Thunderbolts, their best event thus far was the long jump. We didn't get the height here. Yella, the former record setter, just watched that record fall. Oh, can't get 38. Needs to make this one if Yella wants to reclaim that title. Now I'm going back to 2017, mind you, and does get past 38. Yella also breaks the record from 2017 and 38.5, and we'll be moving on. Minty Swirl clears 37.5, but not 38. Minty Maniacs do get it passed on the second try, and stay alive, 38.5, no. One more chance to join those moving on. Oh, and they had the height but landed on the bar. In fact, you could see the bar bending underneath. It was such a solid vertical impact. Only then did it jump off those pegs. Snarl has watched mixed fortunes on the runs beforehand. Fails on jump one, but passes on jump two with height to spare. 38 comes next. No, not that time. Also, shout out to the referees, by the way, who are on this high stand at bar level, watching. Hopefully they aren't afraid of heights. 38.5, Snarl gets by. And Balls of Chaos are on to the next round. With each passing marble, field is getting whittled down. Waspy, or will the Midnight Wisp be in that mix? Can't get it on 37.5. That was just a slight glance of the bar. That one was a harder impact, so Midnight Wisps are done. Much better on the first try. 
That one, a harder hit. Mandarin from the O-Rangers. Clears 37 and a half. Second height at 38, jump one. Didn't get it. Good distance on the bar. Not that that counts for much. Gets 38. Mandarin has a chance at advancement at 38.5 and clears it. With some height to spare, this record will be falling. Question is, who will stand or fly victorious at the end? Stinger from the Hornets wants in on the party. Gets 37.5, but not 38. Next jump, though, does get by. 38.5 upcoming. And will join the fray. Now Momo Momo. Bump on the bar there. Does not clear it. Second attempt. Sails on past. It was good to get past the first height that is thrown at you. Now you can start focusing on these later ones. 38. Gets it. 38-5. Gets it as well. So Team Momo will be advancing. On to the Bumblebees. Honey. Trying to stretch her wings and can't do it that time. Second attempt, does clear it. Some of these marbles have a lot more spin than others on these launch attempts, as Honey gets past 38. Now I realize that there are no style points, uh, but still, some marbles have a flair for the dramatic, as there you see those who have moved on. Nine marbles past the old record of 38, the final round though, and Quasar does not get 39. There you go. Does on the second jump. So rather than having them go until they stop, we will go basically round by round from here on out. Ducky. Second attempt? No. So they are done. The Green Ducks. We'll finish in the top 10. I think they were really eyeing a top 5 if they could. Mellow Yellow, they'll be happy somewhere in the top 10, but they do get by 39. So how many will be eliminated? I'll tell you how high up Mellow Yellow will be finishing. Ooh, well off the mark there with Snarl, almost past the bar, hitting the front side of the bar, so with the marbles back, and does not get past 39 either. Mandarin from the O-Rangers. Clears it. You feel the intensity ratcheting up here. Stinger from the Hornets now. Can't get by the bar on that attempt. We'll have one more. Stadium a buzz. And that turns to a disappointing buzz. I don't know what that sounds like, but Stinger can't get past 39. The Hornets are out. So that is, again, one more spot that some of the likes of Mellow Yellow, for instance, are climbing up the field. Momo Momo will have to rely on jump number two to get by and does not. Oh, was looking so good earlier. But Team Momo is out at 39, which has caught a lot of these teams out. Bumblebees, what can Honey do? She gets by easily. Oh my gosh, well above 40, in fact. Let's hope she saved some of that up for the next round. Said it was daunting for those referees. It's even more daunting for these competitors to go up that high. All right, 39.5 for Team Galactic on some of the remaining marbles, doesn't get it. Needs a lot more height on the second run? No, Quasar is done. So Team Galactic. And Yella joins them on a failed first attempt. Will anybody get past 39.5? No, jump number two, also failed. Bottom of the bar on that one. You can see the angle of the bar, how it goes flying, how square they were. And Mandarin gets over it. 39.5, the lead to the O-Rangers. Our championship leaders. Honey from the Bumblebees. Ooh, that was looking close. May have had the height. And does on jump number two. This is turning into a good battle here. As our newcomers, the Bumblebees, into the Marvel League this year. We've whittled it down. 40, and Mandarin clears it. I think with some space to spare. All right, the marble is in your court now, Bumblebees. Honey, 
Ooh, bottom of the bar. Needs more height and a better angle. Honey doesn't get it. So the Bumblebees will get the silver and the O-Rangers will get another gold. Question is, how high can the O-Rangers get? Mandarin will attempt to better the record and does. 40.5, just by a hair. Attempting 41, nope. This is just for extra glory right now. They know they've got the gold. Mandarin, no, not quite. However, it is still a new Marble League record. 40.5, in the high jump, Mellow Yellow gets the bronze. Congratulations to them. Bumblebee is the silver, but the O-Rangers get the gold. And as a result, a $5,000 donation will be made in the O-Rangers name to the St. Louis Area Food Bank. Courtesy of last week tonight. Whew, a long event. Look at what it's done to the standings. Not much, only five position changes overall, none among the top five. So the Arrangers still the team to beat as we move into the Aquathlon. I hope you're ready to take the plunge here in event 14 of the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Event 14, the Aquathlon. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. What is an aquathlon? I hear you asking that question. Well, it's a hybrid event where you have a sprint down the track, just like we had in the normal sprint, but then the marbles will plunge into the water for a run down to the finish line. As you've seen in other aquatic events, that can be very treacherous no matter how short the run. Two teams will go head to head, starting off in their own lanes. Once it is that sprint to the finish, it is the third marble to cross the finish line that determines the time. So you can lose one, but otherwise you have to stay as a team. It will be a tournament style format, pure as can be, even with a third place consolation match. Our first runs, the Green Ducks and Balls of Chaos. Let's see how this will go. Balls of Chaos with an early lead, but everything changes when you get to the water. The fact that there, it changed even before they got to the water because the Green Ducks took the lead. You're watching for the third marble. That will be the one to trip the finish line, and thus far, it's Balls of Chaos trying to play catch up as they split the Green Ducks, and it will be a close match. In fact, nearly all of the Balls of Chaos were right there, but the Green Ducks get them by 18 hundredths of a second. You'll see the green circle indicating the winning marble, the red circle indicating the losing marble. This is gonna be tricky if all of them were that close. My goodness. Savage Speeders taking the lead here. They're nice and bunched, those top three. But as you drop into the water, sometimes that can be to your detriment because you'll land on top of each other and might shoot you backwards. So far, the Savage Speeders are out in front. In fact, all four of theirs are going to cross before the third marble for the Hornets. It's a half a second win by the Speeders. Now remember, in this tournament style structure, you don't have to get a super fast time, you just have to beat the other team. Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Bumblebees. The Cat's Eyes sitting in fifth among that gaggle up there in the top for a podium spot. Bumblebees had a great showing last time, but are still down in the order a little ways. They jumped three spots up to 11th, but can they do better here? They do get by the Crazy Cat's Eyes, but only just. Watch on that top lane. That trio of Crazy Cat's Eyes may threaten to steal this one away. And did they? The Bumblebees get it by six hundredths of a second. That was so close. Not even a length between them. It's difficult also because you can see the reflections down below. I know that can trip some people up. So watch on the top side. Team Galactic and Momo. Galactic with an early lead on the land portion. Now they dive into the water. A little drafting going on. We've seen how treacherous these currents can be, but also the power of the draft. Who's going to get it here? Three marbles up in front. I think it's Momo. And it is. The same gap that we just had, in fact. Six hundredths of a second, and only by a nose. 
Team Momo down in ninth in the standings. Galactic all the way up in sixth. Raspberry Racers and Mellow Yellow, kind of the polar opposites of the ends here. The Racers were up on top early, but they've slowly been dropping down the order. Now currently in seventh, Mellow Yellow cannot win, and they can't even qualify in the top three and auto qualify either. But they're in a solid line here, but trailing the top three marbles from the Racers. Nobody's going to make the move, and the Racers will coast on home. They will advance to the next round by well over a second and a half. Two bronze medals for Mellow Yellow, not enough to get them off the bottom spot. Indy Maniacs and the Hazers, two top half of the order teams. And Minty Maniacs slow out of the gate to start, but a little separation for the Hazers could give them a little opening, and here come the Minty Maniacs. Those top three for the Hazers still holding the lead. Watch that top marble needs to gain some ground if they're hoping to advance and they're not gonna do it. The Hazers get on by. Eighth place team wins by half a second. Pretty good gap as well. Not even close. The O'Rangers and the Oceanics. Latter of whom has captured gold, captured silver, and captured bronze at least once in this tournament. The O'Rangers, they've done multiples of each and lead the overall Marble League. They've done so well in the last few events. Are they going to keep that up here? All four of their marbles are in front of the Oceanics, but now the tides change just a little bit. They're swarmed by the Oceanics. The top two got across, but this is going to be a photo finish. There's the two for the Orangers. Oh, look at this. The Oceanics may have done it. They did. Four hundredths. They win at least a heat of the water event. In fact, I think it's a little sweeter because they've dethroned the number one team in the Marble League. All right, on to the next event. Let's, let's gather ourselves against the Thunderbolts and the Wisps. The Wisps clear out in front, almost a four Marble lead. Thunderbolts needing to get something going. It's not going to happen. The Wisps will advance quickly. I'm just still kind of chuffed about the Oceanics in a water event. The crowd is as well. That was an easy win for the Wisps. All right, let's see who advances to the quarterfinals and who gets left behind. It will be the Green Ducks and the Savage Speeders to get things started here. Is this last year's Marble League? All right, Savage Speeders and the Green Ducks, far lane to the near lane, respectively. Speeders just slightly quicker out of the gate, but everybody's staying pretty bunched, at least among the top three for the Savage Speeders. And everything changes once they plunge into the water, streaking downward. Everybody is right there. This might be too close to call as well. As the teams start weaving from side to side, everybody's getting mixed up. Did the speeders just get it? I think they might have. By 18 hundredths, the Savage Speeders are moving on. Green Ducks down in 12th in the order could have used a shot at the semifinals. The Savage Speeder shut that down. They are focused on closing that gap to the Orangers. Now that that orange team is out. Momo with the lead in the next semifinal. Oh, hard hit as they come into the water, throwing marbles side to side. The Bumblebees are trying to make up some ground. Their top two are well out in front of the rest. And it's three marbles for Momo who will get the win. 65 hundredths. Momo just kept it close enough that they could use the draft, whereas the Bumblebees were all spread out. Over final C of the Aquathlon. Hazers, just a step quicker out of the gate, but the speed is not sustained. The Raspberry Racers will drop their three into the water first, but everybody is right there, all within a few lengths. Speed from the Hazers, they take the lead. But it's going to be really close. Watch up top those two. Oh, they bump into each other. Is that going to slow them down just enough to give the Racers the win? No! The Hazers capture it barely. Look at how close that was. Even with that collision between the two Hazers, up top, they kept it together. The Midnight Wisps and the Oceanics in the final quarterfinal. So close between them, a slightly tighter formation, but a nice launch perhaps off of each other from the Oceanics. They're trying to give chase. Wisps out in front, watch to the bottom side. And oh, that's gonna be close as well. Under two tenths, but the Wisps 
will end the oceanic dream of perhaps winning a water event. Everybody was moving side to side in that one. Did the Oceanics have put it together at the end? I think they'll be wondering that for quite some time. So it will be Savage Speeders and Team Momo, Hazers and the Midnight Wisps vying for a spot in the final. Momo in the far lane, Speeders in the near. And they're off. Momo, one step quicker. But here come the Speeders on the bottom lane. They're getting separated though. That may not help them, but a great entry into the water. Nearly all four Speeders were out in front. Momo putting it back together though, trying to claw that speed back. But this trio, now quartet of Speeders will cross the line before anybody else. A stamp of authority. The Savage Speeders are on to the final. Not even close. Momo thought they got off to a great start, but unable to sustain it. The second semi-final, the Hazers and the Wisps. Oh, what happened there? We've had a starting gate failure. It's a false start. Hopefully they're able to cordon those marbles before they get too far down the course. They dry them off if they made it into the water, and they're going to be off again. The Wisps with a three marble lead, nearly a four marble lead before they enter the water. But the Hazers, this is where they have excelled in the last couple of aquatic events. Using a bunch formation up top, the Midnight Wisps are trying to seal off the Hazers from getting by them. This is gonna be really close, but the Wisps get it. Eight hundredths. How did this happen with everybody up there? That bunched formation actually doing more to serve as a roadblock, I think to stop the Hazers from getting by, and it barely worked. The Speeders and the Wisps will advance. Let's watch Team Momo and the Hazers in the third place match to see who gets the bronze. Momo and the Hazers, one point apart in the standings, and it's the Hazers who will enter the water first. And great speed throughout. In fact, they bump one of Momo out of the way. A four marble lead. Can they hold on to it? They will. It will be bronze for the Hazers. They were one point ahead of Team Momo, and they will stretch that lead. Good teamwork. Haze amaze at a bronze. But now, the final. The Savage Speeders and the Midnight Wisps, two of our top four teams. And it's the Wisps out to a short lead but it's gonna be evened up and surpassed by the speeders as they go into the water. But things flip as they gather themselves underneath. It's the wisps out in front. Can the speeders put some speed together? This is gonna be close. A dive to the inside. I'm not sure who got it. It's gonna be a photo finish. Great moves. Don't be watching the first few marbles, watching that next little wave because that's who made the difference. Going into the middle there, catching the draft of the top two, the wisps our gold medalists. Congratulations to today's winners. By one hundredth of a second, the Midnight Wisps get the gold in the Aquaflin over the Savage Speeders. The Hazers come in third with the bronze. Everybody's still sopping wet upon the podium, but the Wisps don't mind at all. Gold medalists, and for their efforts, a $5,000 donation will be made to the St. Mary's Food Bank, courtesy of last week tonight. Now the gaps come down just a little bit up front between the O'Rangers and the Savage Speeders. The Wisps vault up into third, and look at the colors there, up to fifth, unable to win the Marble League. The next event, the Collision. For many, event 15 in the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, was circled in red on Marble's calendars. Some dread it. Others look forward to the physicality. No matter where you stand, this is Collision. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Very similar to last year when we saw this event both in the showdown and the main Marble League. The blue dominoes are the ones that are loose that you can careen right through. Green dominoes, they're not gonna be able to be knocked down. But you also see others that will release traps on this test run here. Oop, there goes a red marble, which will launch the ball bearing to come across. Nobody hit there. It won't always launch it. It has to be a fairly solid impact with the triggers in order to make it work. But still, they're always going to be back there looming, making you wonder if something's going to be released. The O'Rangers and Team Galactic will get us started here in the first of six runs. 
all the different strategies that can be had in this event. You'll see it coming. There comes the planet that comes down if you knock over a certain trigger uh, you see over on the left. This will lead to a 4-4 four four tie. I know there's a lot to explain in this event, but the small little ones, you'll see it triggered on the left side of your screen, starts those red streaks of meteors that release the planetary ball and could create a lot of chaos. A W, by the way, a win, D is a draw or a tie, and an L is what you want to avoid. Green Ducks and the Thunderbolts. Spread out pretty wide. Both planetary balls come down. A couple of ball bearings are released as well. And most of the chaos had already happened at that point. You see the Green Ducks in a much tighter formation to try to spear their way through the Thunderbolts. Well, the Green Ducks getting nicked to the side by one of the planets. And thankfully, it ends there. The Green Ducks will pick up the win 4-2. to two. Thunderbolts are gold medalists from back in 2016 in this event. The Rangers and the Green Ducks largely miss each other, and it's the planets that come flying down and knock off one of the Rangers. One of the Green Ducks holds on and then falls off, but most of the Green Ducks were able to stay planted. Both webbed feet on the ground as the Rangers just shot like a cannon off to the side, and the Green Ducks get a 3-1 win. Team Galactic and the Thunderbolts here in Group A. A little glancing blow sends most of the Thunderbolts to the far side. Oh, a hard hit from the ball bearing. Launches across. That had a lot of force. And look at down below there, teetering on the edge. How did this happen? There goes the red marble that just gets catapulted on. Oh, my goodness. And uh, that galactic marble also way down in the bottom, just holding on. Boy, that was a solid impact. Four to three, Thunderbolts get the win. Now the O-Rangers will be next up for the Thunderbolts. They all spread off quite a ways to the side there. Most of the O-Rangers are already off as two big ball bearings come down. We have two that are launched across. And Thunderbolts trying to stay and curl on, and they will get this win. I believe three compared to the O-Rangers, one. Upper right. There's that catapult that ends up launching a solid ball bearing. You know, sometimes these are chain reactions. Other times, the actual electron ball gets shot across the table from the side. Think about chaos here, and that was a hard hit. But thankfully, bumping up against that green domino means you're not going to knock it over. Thunderbolts get a 3-1 win. Final match in Group A, Green Ducks and Team Galactic. Neither have ever meddled in this event before. One planet is released. And Team Galactic already still and safe. A bit of an arrowhead coming from the Green Ducks in their formation. We'll try to walk you through as many as we can tell from the replays. Three to two. Galactic over Green Ducks. How does the group shake out? There you see the results. The Green Ducks and the Thunderbolts will be moving on. The O-Rangers, interestingly, Will not. Championship leaders out after their group stage. Oh, everybody spread to the side here as we begin Group B. The Savage Speeders, I believe, will get the win. Nothing dangerous tripped here. Those replays coming just a little bit quick to see what the formation and the strategy is. Coming down the ramp, but it's a 2 1 win. Bumblebees and the Hornets. Always interesting when these two square up. Spread out wide, a couple of marbles to the top side. Hornets have everybody on, and I believe they're going to get a sweep. A little bit of spread coming from the Hornets. That's somewhat surprising for this event. You like to be in the middle if you can, trying to hit up as squarely as you can and let it come down to brute force. The Hornets, about as well as you can do there, 5-3. to three. Savage Speeders and the Bumblebees. Halfway through the group. Ooh, Bumblebees splayed sideways. All five of the Savage Speeders are still on. Two planets released. And somehow, they avoid everything. Savage Speeders did hit a red domino up top, but managed to stay on. It was more of a glancing blow than anything. And it was one of the ball bearings that released the planet from the left that you see coming in. By then, everybody vacated the middle. 
And uh, I said that was about as well as you could do in a 5-3. No, that's a little bit better. 5-1. Hazers and the Hornets. To the side, a lot of things being tripped now. Chaos coming. Stuff flying all across the board. And where's it gonna settle? The Hazers have done it. I can see three on from here. It was one of those very large ball bearings just brushes past. A couple of gaps that already existed up there. Definitely don't want to hit those. At least if you bump into a domino, you may have a chance to stay on the table. But if you just go straight through the gap, not going to happen. Hazers, 3-1, get the win. Hornets and the Savage Speeders. The Hornets, the runners-up in this event in the showdown in 2019. Barracks coming across, aiming for those pair of marbles. Is it going to knock them wayward? No. The Savage Speeders, I think, have done enough. They lose two to the top side immediately. Hornets have lost two to the bottom already, plus one up top. And then there's that final bump. Three to two. Savage Speeders, nine points, undefeated in the group. The Bumblebees and the Hazers. Come down now. Good solid impact. Knocks them backward, most of them but a good majority stay on the board. It's gonna be four, I believe, for the Bumblebees. One gone for the Hazers, two gone for the Hazers, one for the Bumblebees down bottom left, nothing tripped, and yes indeed, a 4-3 win. So there you can see the winners from Group B and those moving on include the Savage Speeders and the Hazers. Speeders still in their quest to whittle down that lead the Rangers have in the Marble League overall championship. It's now down to 20, and we know it's coming down even further. First run of Group C with the Minty Maniacs. Oh, look at this, one of the referees got hit with the starting gate. A 3-2 formation for the Minty Maniacs in the meantime knocks the Raspberry Racers sideways, but was the run aborted altogether? Yes, it was. All right, we're gonna redo it, and this time some trickeration by the Minty Maniacs means that the Raspberry Racers just fly all the way around them. But were it not for the ball bearing, I think the Minty Maniacs would have gotten that win easily. Instead, this late ball bearing that comes on is gonna even the score at two. Oh no, actually, that's the one, that's the ball bearing. So not the little red one. And one of the Raspberry is almost hidden in that bottom left ball bearing, I almost missed him. The uh, little red balls are electrons, by the way, electron balls. Except this time, we actually know where they are. All the way across come the Oceanics. Fresh off of winning a heat in a water event, but they're gonna be bold to the side here. They're doing a good job of hanging on, but just barely. Watch this planet down to the bottom side. It's gonna stay put. The Oceanics will move on. Three of them go all the way straight through the middle and it's dispersing that energy from Balls of Chaos out to the side. Well, the Oceanics gets clobbered by a planet. Ball bearing knocks another one. Oh, <laughs> look at bottom center there. That's dangerously close. We get another planet coming in that misses everybody. Oceanics get a 3-1 win. Anti Maniacs and the Oceanics. And they come, and the Minty Maniacs send three to the far side. They've already lost a couple. Here comes the planet, and a hard impact between two of the Minty Maniacs. But they don't lose either one. I believe this ends up being a draw. Kind of a disheveled entry from the Oceanics. They may have caused them to lose one to the upper left, and then one to the upper right. Potential disaster coming from those planets that were launched, but the draw gives them both a point. Raspberry Racers and Balls of Chaos up now. Spread out to the side, Balls of Chaos still have four on, but here come the Electrons and some of the Ball Bearings. Two more, oh, one of the Ball Bearings strikes and removes one of the Balls of Chaos. And I believe they will come out the winners, the silver medalists from this event in the Marble League 2019. We wait for everything to settle. Balls of Chaos loading up the back portion of their lineup. And they still have four on, but this is where it starts to get a little crazy because here comes that electron ball to launch two ball bearings. Misses on the first, but nails the Balls of Chaos competitor that time. 
And look at the big gap that's over there in the corner. No dominoes to save you. Still, the Balls of Chaos do get the win, 3-2. to two. They immediately head back up to the starting gate to face off with the Minty Maniacs. Oh, and here comes one of the tripped marbles launching a large ball bearing. It currently sits 3-2 to two Minty Maniacs. Will it stay that way? Yes, it will. This event always perched right on the edge of disaster. Ooh, Minty Maniacs nearly had one saved up top there at the base of that ball bearing launcher. And then there's that final nudge that would have normally tripped something else up there if that had impacted a little bit more solidly. Final in Group C, Oceanics and the Raspberry Racers. Tight bunch for both of them. That sends everybody to the side. There aren't going to be many left on here. An Electron comes shooting across. Two ball bearings. Here comes another one. And it's heading in the direction vaguely of a couple of the remaining competitors. No, it just stalls against the green block. Ooh, and now it sets its sights on the upper right up there. No. The audience holding their breath on that one. A 3-2 formation for the Oceanics. Usually works pretty well for them, but this time not so much. And even before the planet and the ball bearings had been launched, most of the damage had been done. 2-1. to one. Oceanics get the win. They have seven points to the Raspberry Racers. One. The Racers sitting in sixth in the standings overall. They're not moving on. Oceanics and the Minty Maniacs, however, they are. Only four teams can win the Marble League. Minty Maniacs is one of them. Midnight Wisps, as you see here, is another. Along with the Savage Speeders and the Rangers. Hard impacts. A lot happening out there right now. And I think it's going to be a draw. 3-2 and a 4-1 employed by the Cat Size and the Wisps, respectively. And here comes the planet down and nearly shoots one of the Wisps off. And then the ball bearing tries to complete the job. Instead, a crazy Cat Size meanders on through. And that ended up making the difference. Tie. Momo and Mellow Yellow. 2019 bronze medalist in Mellow Yellow. They opt for a spear and shoot right on through. And they've managed to stay out of trouble decently well. But look at this ball bearing on the bottom right. is going to sweep one of them off. They would have had the win. Instead, one point apiece as it's a 2-2 drop. Striped planet goes right in between them. Ball bearings everywhere, and then is the ball bearing just doing its job? Guiding over to the side. Nearly got hung up and safe. Instead, it ends in a draw. The Wisps and Momo up now. And they come in a good line by the Wisps that allowed them to stay fairly safe, but as they're bouncing around. They lose another one, and it will stay a draw, I believe. Another 3-2. Oh, one of the Momos is... It actually left and re-entered the field. So that is not going to count. Once you're off, you're off. Even if you manage to come back on. I like I like the uh, effort. How sneaky, <laughs> Momo. But unfortunately, these uh, referees are quite professional. And they saw that one coming. Mellow Yellow doing a great job here. Four of them on. Crazy Cat's Eyes. We're in the upper part of the standings for a while. They are the best placed team that cannot win the Marble League, but they can still podium. But they need to do a little bit better here. Mellow Yellow gets the win. Midnight Wisps next to take on Mellow Yellow. And four of them on. Electron Ball shoots across. Midnight Wisps still active. And this is going to be a high-scoring draw, I believe. Let's watch here. One of the Mellow Yellows goes off the bottom. Wisps have lost one to the upper left. Solid impact down on that lower left, and that seems to be the place to go. And oh, look at that down on the bottom. Wedged between, but still on, even with an electron ball shooting across. Oh, no, it is outside the white area. Oh, that was a trick of the camera then. That does not count. Tricky, tricky. That's why I am not a referee. I'm just up in the commentary box. As the crazy cat's eyes have kept four on, we will get an easy win here with nothing flying about. Two team Momo shoot off to the bottom, followed by Yellow Eye. 
Everybody else has done a pretty good job of staying on. 4-3. It will stay. So the results of Group D mean that Midnight Wisps and Mellow Yellow are moving on. Mellow Yellow are 16th place team. They don't get 16th here. That dubious distinction goes to the O-Rangers. Now we enter a tournament-style format. Quarterfinals will begin with the Green Ducks and the Minty Maniacs. Maniacs needing to move on to make a charge at winning the Marble League. They've already lost one to the bottom. Oh, one of the ball bearings shoots off one of the Green Ducks, and I believe that'll make the difference. Four to three, and a 1-3-1 that the Ducks went with seemed to be going pretty well until that. Three for the Green Ducks, what could have been four. The Minty Maniacs have done enough to move on. Onto the semis for them. Back in the quarterfinals, the Speeders and Mellow Yellow. Tight formations for both, but the Mellow Yellows have lost two to the bottom, three out the same gap. And the Savage Speeders. Birch one down in the bottom left. Standard 3-2 for them. And that gap paid dividends later on. A lot of marbles just crawling their way through. Next up, Oceanics and the Thunderbolts. Two teams in the bottom part of the standings. Two blue hewn marbles. Electron ball shoots across. Ball bearing as well. Here comes another one. And everybody's out of the way. And I believe the Thunderbolts have done it. They keep one spinning in the center. One that bumps safely off the ramp. And that's where it stays. Even with the extra marbles coming on, I'm just missing both of those Thunderbolts by a hair. The Thunderbolts are on to the semifinals. Midnight Wisps and the Hazers. Ooh, hazers come on through. Midnight Wisps have lost a couple. One of the planets is deployed. Here comes the other one. And it's going to, oh, miss all of the Hazers. Down in the bottom, but we're not done yet. Oh, 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 splitting them was a ball bearing. Otherwise, that might have cleaned up the Hazers and knocked two more of them off. Instead, they're going to hold on here. One of the ball bearings on the left knocked out one of the Hazers. But watch these bottom two. Big ball bearing? Not going to do it. How about a little ball bearing? Off the ricochet? Also, not going to do it. So the Hazers survive. Midnight Wisps get fifth. On to the semifinals. Savage Speeders and Minty Maniacs. Look, look, at, look it up at the upper right there. The Savage Speeders opt for an asymmetrical formation. Is it going to work for them? That is a bold move in a semifinal. They've got four hanging on, and I believe it worked. There's nothing in the rulebook that says you can't do that. It's just that most teams don't because they like to be symmetrical as they descend down the course. The Speeders, interesting choice. I wonder if we'll see more opt for that same decision. Hazers and the Thunderbolts. They come in now, Hazers have lost a couple. Thunderbolts are staying fairly clean with all five on. Will anything else be tripped to knock them off? I don't believe so. That's nearly a clean sweep. Great use of space, even with that impact from one of the planets. The Thunderbolts stamp their authority with a 5-1 win over the Hazers. And so that means we move on to the third place match, the Minty Maniacs and the Hazers. Hazers down in seventh in the overall. Minty Maniacs can still win the Marble League in fourth. What can they do here? Down they come. Minty Maniacs keep four on. They've lost it down to three. Oh, actually, no, they have one still on. They've got four. And the Electron shoots across. We aren't done yet. And I believe the Minty Maniacs have done it. They actually had one hiding down below. I thought they had three on, but they actually had four. And of course, they nearly had two if that impact would have knocked those bottom left marbles off. But instead, the Minty Maniacs hang on even with a late launch from an Electron Ball. And actually, a failed mechanism up there in the upper left. So the Minty Maniacs are your bronze medalists. 
but who gets the gold? Savage Speeders going back to a more standard formation with the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts have one stalled in the middle, but here come the planets. Four on for the Speeders. And that's how it will remain. Four to three, the Savage Speeders get the gold and continue to chip away at that lead from the O-Rangers. In fact, doing so much because of the O-Rangers 16th place that the Savage Speeders should take the lead in the Marble League. With one event to go, it's exactly what you mean when you say closing strong. Thunderbolts with the silver, Minty Maniacs with the bronze. And with that win, yet another $5,000 donation will be made in the Savage Speeder's name. It's their third one, in fact. But this one will go to the Weld Food Bank, courtesy of last week tonight. Congratulations to our podium finishers. Thunderbolts needed a great result. And the Savage Speeders, they are celebrating with the fans. Getting a well-deserved ovation. They have jumped the O-Rangers. And in fact, only the top three now are able to win the Marble League. Minty Maniacs can get the podium, but they cannot win. It's only appropriate that after many events in the 2020 Marble League, a marathon would close it out. As we get ready for a lot of laps and a lot of potential lead changes and order changes we've already seen here in the Marble League 2020, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Hey everybody, welcome to the Andromeda Dome. I'm Greg Woods. This difficult track, stretched out as you can see it, nearly nine and a half meters long, looking for a around 19 second lap time. There's a lot of laps coming. And these marbles are gonna have to be at their fittest to bring it on home. As King Stardust and John Rolliver will get things going here and demonstrate the different lines and the different pathways around this course. Pass the chevrons over the curbs, avoiding the curbs, around that sharp left-hander after the back stretch, then through these flowing S's to take you to the bottom of the course and that ever difficult conveyor belt that can make or break a race. There you see the representatives who will be taking part in the qualifying race, no fewer than seven team captains a part of this one. Where will they end up to start the marathon? Let's run them through this race first. Down they come and we see the speed difference down that back stretch through the soft right hander on the sharp left. They descend down here and it looks like we have a good race developing with the Oceanics and Mellow Yellow already. Mellow Yellow, oh we got a marble stuck. Red Eye is stuck on the course and we have a local yellow. I'm not sure the safety marble will need to be deployed here. Let's see if we can spot Red Eye on the left here. There he is. So that may be a tricky situation here and an odd place to stop too. We'll have to see what caused that. Uh, he gets bumped and they get going again as they come up the belt. That's gonna be a uh, cause for discussion, I would have to think. A race coming off the conveyor belt. Thunderbolts have the lead over the Oceanics. Mellow Yellow, Balls of Chaos, Savage Speeders coming next. But look at that battle for second place. Oceanics get it and they're gonna hold it. That little bump caused Mellow Yellow to lose a few spots but immediately they get it back and come across the line. Just a couple of laps to go here. Off the belt, it's the Thunderbolt leading by half a second. Savage Speeders up there. Green Ducks into six. Now they lose that out. Balls of Chaos, Hornets, and the O'Rangers up there as well. Thunderbolts lead. Coming down. Oceanics make a little move there, but can't get it to stick. As they come across the line, they do this time. Oceanics get it by a tenth of a second. One lap to go. And this is a very long race that is coming up. So starting order, not absolutely crucial, but it's bragging rights right here. We're hearing that there is discussion already about the incident with Red Eye. The coaches are going to be meeting about it. They're going to be meeting with the committee who have the telemetry as we come across the line here. And Red Eye, now the race is over, is one lap behind. But discussions ongoing. This is not over yet. It seems that the committee may be seeing something a little untoward in how Red Eye came to a stop. The coaches are leaving the committee room now. I think a ruling is coming. We'll see if we can hear it. In the spirit of good sportsmanship, they unanimously decided it is fairest to start Crazy Cat's eyes higher. How interesting. All right. So it seems that the stoppage was not Red Eye's fault, and the teams unanimously agreed that given their position in the overall lineup for the Marble League, they want to move them up the starting order to reflect that. 
that is a great bit of sportsmanship here. They want this to be fair. Remember, this is a very long race, so one or two spots is not going to matter overall. This is more of a symbolic thing, and that is fantastic to see. But the marathon will decide who wins the Marble League, and they are rolling. A big burst of speed down the backstretch, and we already see a lot of lead changes as they bump off those striped curbs through the S's for the first time, and it will be Mellow Yellow out in front. Oceanics had second place, but lost it to the Thunderbolts, but they get it back. Bumblebees also right there as they're gonna come off the conveyor belt. Midnight Wisps in fourth. Remember, they need to essentially win this race in order to have a chance. We're gonna talk about permutations here in just a second, but let's get settled into the race flow for now, Balls of Chaos holding in third place, holding off the Bumblebees and a great challenge there. Midnight Wisps get by in the melee afterward. Mellow Yellow, a clean exit off of the ramp, and down they plunge, but it's closed right up again. Good burst of speed coming from the Bumblebees. They can't take second place there, but they may in just a couple of laps time. Balls of Chaos, they're also getting in the mix. Minty Maniacs, they're locked in a great battle behind Balls of Chaos as well as they come off the belt. Just four hundredths between them. Mellow Yellow still out in front as they descend down the backstretch once again. Loss of speed for the Balls of Chaos, and they're falling back into the clutches of the Minty Maniacs. We're going to talk about who these marbles are as the course of this race goes along as well. So talking about permutations, after the last event, Savage Speeders got up into first place by five points. The difference between first and second in the overall points that you get from these events is 25 and then 20, so a five-point difference. Based on the count back, if O'Rangers win this event, they will win the Marble League. They'll be tied on points, but better on gold medals. Midnight Wisps, the only other team that can win the overall Marble League, they would have to win this event and uh, oh well that is pertinent as they run right now. So Midnight Wisps would be up there because they need the Savage Speeders farther down the order. They would need them uh, in the lower part of the top 10 and if they fall much below that, second place for the Midnight Wisps, then they need them to finish near last. So we will keep track of where they run and how that would reflect the instant championship standings but this is a very long race. A decently long lead right now for Mellow Yellow in the classifications. That's come down just a little bit. Midnight Wisp are doing their part to try to cut into this lead. Nobody riding those curbs through the first sector, at least very few, we found that that is maybe not the quickest way to go. Also, getting squeezed on the exit after that long backstretch through that left-hander can really put a lot of marbles out of sorts. You gotta be careful there. You don't want it to turn into a, a ramp situation like we've seen in a couple of other events, and you could go flying off this course. Minty Maniacs doing a great job of holding in third place. Bumblebees lose out on fourth to the Green Ducks. Look at this charging up. Here come the crazy cat's eyes into fifth place. They are so humble right now to be included in that order based on what happened. Uh, I can tell you the team watching on right now, nervous as can be, but thankful for all of the coaches to let them start where they did. Midnight Wisps take the lead over Mellow Yellow, but only just seven hundredths of a lead, and that's all they had starting into this lap. But Mellow Yellow not going away yet. They're going to be neck and neck as they come up the conveyor belt. Minty Maniacs holding in third. Bumblebees up into fifth behind the crazy cat size, and Mellow Yellow gets the better launch, coming over the start-finish line. Down that ramp with the shark fin, it can really knock you one way or another and put you completely out of position down that backstretch. You've got to be careful with how you handle it. Mellow Yellow coming across the line here, 1.78. That's as big a lead as we've seen for quite some time. The Hornets in sixth, Thunderbolts back there in seventh, Oceanics. Look at the Savage Speeders down there in 13th, O'Rangers in 14th. Two of the top three are in the bottom few positions of the order. Thus far, I know we've got a long way to go. We're a third of the way through this. This is the Midnight Wisps perhaps to lose, and that would not be expected given where they started this race in the standings. Mellow Yellow knows that especially in a marathon, a big lead isn't always the best thing that you want to have. You have to have enough energy to make it to the end. That being said, if the Minty Maniacs, who have a little lead over the Midnight Wisp, could get mixed up with them, that's going to let Mellow Yellow off into the distance. And what an event that would be if Mellow Yellow could win the final event after being in dead last in the Marble League for most of this entire championship. Midnight Wisp falling back to fourth. Their little burst of speed to get them up to the front. Maybe they're cooling themselves down a little bit. Slowing down to mount a charge later on in this race. Strategies abound. Raspberry Racers bringing up the rear right now. They were an eighth place team in the overall standings. A little disappointing to see them all the way down in last right now. But still, long way to go. 
The lead has come down quite a bit, just four tenths of a second between the Minty Maniacs chasing Mellow Yellow. Here comes the speed on the backstretch. They move them around the outside and Minty Maniacs take the lead. However, we are only halfway through this race. I don't think Mellow Yellow are too concerned at this point. They just don't want them to get an unassailable lead well off into the distance if they can. Bumblebees holding in third place. And then it's the Midnight Wisps. Crazy Cat's Eyes, Oceanics, Balls of Chaos, Hornets, Green Ducks, and Team Momo will round out the top 10. That lead down to just a few lengths between Minty Maniacs and Mellow Yellow. Bumblebees also want to get in the fray. They're going to be one step apart between them coming off the belt. Oh, nice through the first sector gets Minty Maniacs. Lead shrunk down to nothing. Mellow Yellow is right there. Perhaps setting them up through these S's. We can get the better flow coming out of it, and it will be Minty Maniac still holding on to the lead. Midnight Wisps holding in fourth. I don't think that's going to be good enough for them to win the Marble League at this point. Oceanics in fifth. They need a good finish. Here comes the speed from Mellow Yellow and a dive bomb move. Nobody saw that one coming. Certainly not the Minty Maniacs. As a new leader gets on by. Ooh, and a little bit of difficulty coming up the belt. Minty fresh. I think a little stunned after that. But now, getting back together and makes the move around the outside. Minty Fresh takes the lead over Yellow from Mellow Yellow. Bumble, the captain of the Bumblebees, back there in third place, by the way, for the Oceanics. They're running their captain, Ocean. Midnight Wisps, the championship contenders have Waspy. As the lead is a quarter of a second for the Midnight Wisps. Pretty, pretty spread out. Who was that coming out of nowhere? Was that the Hazers? Great speed down the back stretch there. This is one of those where you have a little bit of time. You can strategize, and the Rangers are doing just that. They're now up into 10th place with 11 laps to go. Midnight Wisps, I think sweating bullets here, seeing them climbing up the order. I don't know about actually on the track, if those competitors are keeping track, but certainly their teammates are watching the scoring pylon with nervous energy. Past the seven minute mark in this race, this is so much longer than what many of these marbles have ever done in a competition like this before. Could make or break, who can manage their energy the best? A little shoulder from the Bumblebees separates them from Balls of Chaos and Midnight Wisps, that's the new order that they are in. Midnight Wisps falling down to fifth. Then Crazy Cat's Eyes, Oceanics, Team Galactic, Momo, and the O-Rangers. Crazy Cat's Eyes back up into fifth place, coming down the ramp and the backstretch. They are eyeing up Balls of Chaos in front of them. The lead nearly two seconds for the Minty Maniacs. Mellow Yellow, they will be happy with second place, certainly, but they got to get there first. And they're going to be one length different with the Bumblebees coming off the belt. Bumblebees move to the outside, then back to the end. They put the Mellow Yellow team on the curbs, and they've lost it out. Little change up there. Mellow Yellow does get them back. Minty Maniacs still out in the lead as you see the start-finish line, the speed that they carry coming over it. It's a fine line to walk. How quickly do you try to enter the belt versus taking it easy? Bumblebees may have had a brief look into second place, but they couldn't hold on to it. Minty Maniacs trying to get a full sector ahead of everybody else. This is a good battle developing, by the way. Mellow Yellow, Bumblebees, Crazy Cat Size. And Bumblebees and Crazy Cat's Eyes get by Mellow Yellow, but Mellow Yellow gets them back coming out of the first sector. Down the back stretch, slightly more speed, but they enter that sharp left-hander a little bit worse for wear, and they fall back to fourth. The longer that these fight together, the bigger the lead is going to be for Minty Maniacs. Currently 3.44. That is a massive margin, but as you've seen, things can change dramatically. Minty Maniacs sitting in fourth, they can still get a podium. In the overall, they just can't win the Marble League. They would love to end it with a medal and a podium if they can, though. Mellow Yellow fights off Crazy Cat's Eyes and gets by for second place. Cat's Eyes up into second. That was pretty surprising for them, I think, considering how this race could have gone. But they swing around through the first sector and retake second place, only to lose it on the backstretch now. Three-second lead, holding for Minty Maniacs, down into the final few laps, not just of this event, but of the 2020 Marble League overall. Team Galactic, our hosts, up into fifth place, a place they know well. Midnight Wisp back into sixth. That's not going to be enough to win them this Marble League. Oceanic, Balls of Chaos, Momo, Savage Speeders, and the O-Rangers. Those two championship contenders have been lockstep for pretty much this entire race, even though they've spent a good chunk of it all the way at the back. Across the start-finish line here, 31 of 33. 
A three-second lead, so it's come down by just a couple of tenths. As Crazy Cat's Eyes holds second place, Mellow Yellow trying to stave off the Bumblebees. That might let Midnight Whistles right back into this, but it's far from over. They're going to need a mammoth effort if they want to make a charge at the championship. Savage Speeders are the tentative champions overall. A couple of laps to go. Mellow Yellow coming across. Bumblebees. Galactic. Galactic gets by into fourth place. Minty Maniac's lead is three and a quarter seconds. It's a huge margin. They just have to keep it clean, and they're going to get a gold medal as they come across into the in the final lap. Crazy Cat's Eye. Mellow Yellow. Team Galactic. Bumblebees. Decent gaps between them. Is anybody going to make a move? Mellow Yellow will, and they'll take second place. They've got a little bit left to try to get up to Minty Maniacs, but I think that lead is not going to be broken. The Minty Maniacs will win the marathon. Minty fresh by the way, this is the first double gold medalist since 2017. And Minty Maniacs, they do get third overall, so they will auto qualify. And it may be an unconventional ninth place, but the Savage Speeders are your 2020 Marble League champions. Jubilation for the Minty Maniacs. 25 points to them, not gonna matter quite as much. Is this gold medal. They know they can't win the Marble League. Blue Yellow, second place. Crazy Cat Size, third. The teams are pretty happy about that. And for their efforts, the Minty Maniacs will have a $5,000 donation made in their name to the West Seattle Food Bank. We'll see of last week tonight. But the Savage Speeders are the winners of the Marble League 2020. Their second victory after the 2016 Marble League. You obviously have to think that ninth place is not where they envision themselves being to come home with a Marble League championship, but they'll take it. Whatever, it's the overall result that matters most to them. And it's been quite a journey for the Savage Speeders, just jumping the O'Rangers after the last event, a brilliant collision performance, and then to get here and to bring it on home is exactly the way that they planned it out. One of three teams with seven medals overall. That is a pretty phenomenal performance for all of them, just in general. Also, because the Savage Speeders are the overall winners, we've been doing $5,000 donations, but by getting a Marble League championship, a $20,000 donation will be made in their name to the International Rescue Committee. That is pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Last week tonight with John Oliver for sponsoring this. Thank you wherever you may be for tuning in. I'm Greg Woods. Until next year, so long everyone. Enjoy the closing ceremony.